hello everybody and welcome to a new star league the new world star league brought to you by starcast tv i am niokin and joining me to help cast this tournament is the one and only raz what's up dude not much man excited to see some of these games how are you today i'm doing great and as you all can see our first group group a that man right there everybody knows he's a deadly zerg soul key and then we've got two terrans haya and ample and then of course we got to balance it out man we got to have a protoss in there and it's going to be mr paralyzed mr afrotoss for those of you that watched starcraft 2. i think this is going to be a good group of course we've got soul key a big favorite but after that I think either uh, or any of those three players could make it out. Yeah, I think Soki, obviously the clear favorite, uh, obviously ASL player, but you're right. The next three guys could definitely all come out in second place. They definitely have the ability, definitely a little bit of a toss up. Maybe Ample is a little bit more of a favorite, more of a no name, but I think any one of these guys can pull it out, especially with some of the best of ones to start and then to the best of threes. So definitely anyone there. Format is going to be very similar to ASL, where the first two rounds are going to be best of one. And then in the winner's match, the loser's match, and the decider's match, it will be a best of three. And these are our groups for this Star League. As you can see, we have a lot of current ASL players. We have current ASL champion players in, in, this, in this tournament. I mean, look at this lineup. We've got, like, Light in Group B, Royal, Mini... Best Snow, JYJ, he just won last season, and then Soma. I mean, this is literally like ASL, just an additional ASL tournament, just coming out of nowhere, really, just sponsored by the New World Star League. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the top of the top of StarCraft. This is it right here, right? Like, there are no names that are bigger than the groups, the names that are in these groups here. This is exciting. We're definitely going to see some high-level games, high-quality stuff from a lot of these players. They are the tippy top. So definitely exciting to see what each of these groups will come out with and what some of these players come out with, them, especially right before ASL. Yeah, so we will be getting into Group A in a moment. Like I said, it is going to be best of ones first. And our first matchup is going to be Soul Key versus Haya. Then we've got Ample versus Paralyze. So let's get into game one and see Sulky versus Haya. See if Haya can actually take down Sulky. Even though I'm a big fan of Sulky and I think he is a big favorite, Haya, you know, actually I was talking to Eon Zerg literally yesterday about a map called Triathlon. And I don't know if you remember this, but Haya played on that map and this man was playing race, Heron versus Protoss. So if there's someone that can pull out a funky build and take down Sulky, I think it could be Haya. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think we've seen over the last couple of years just builds coming out of nowhere. Different people are find, figuring out, hey, I'm going to do this all in, especially best of one. And I'm going to take care of business. I think Haya could do it as well. Yeah. He could come out of nowhere and say, hey, I'm going to just raise BBS something and then be able to take out Solti in the best of one. So why not? Yeah, and we saw that in the pre previous ASL, maybe not necessarily from Haya, but... I think I remember it being Bishop, who was like one basing on uh, that new map. And uh, he was, you know, taking down some strong opponents there. And we may see an opening like that from Haya here. Um, so let's get into game one of our first group. It will be Haya versus Volti on Vermeer. We are into game one, and we do have the one and only Soul Key in the top right. Or in the top left, sorry. And then, of course, in the top right, our Terran player. It is Haya, and as I stated, our map is Vermeer. That's going to be the first map for both of our best of ones. And I, I like to start off with the standard map. We've just got a map that, you know, these players have played hundreds of thousands of games on. And we're definitely going to be able to see them playing at their peak. And I, I got to point out, 
There's actually a very epic game of Soul Key recently, maybe two seasons ago in the ASL versus Mong. If you guys have not checked that out, that is absolutely one of the best Terran versus Zerg I've seen in the past couple of years. Yeah, I remember that game. Split map, mech, just insanity. Just wild, wild stuff. So definitely Vermeer can, while it's standard, can produce some really, really crazy games still. Yeah, so as I mentioned, Haya, he can pull out a lot of builds. We did see JYJ pull out, you know, Ray style on retro. Was it versus actually Soul Key? For some reason, I'm thinking it was Soul Key or maybe it was Hero. Uh, and I know Haya is someone that likes to race with him spawning at top right where you can wall in. You know, maybe he'll go for that type of style. I would love to see it. But because we see the barracks positioning right there, that, of course, is not going to be a Wraith play unless he's going to go for, um, I guess, a 1-1-1. But either way, that's not going to be an all-in type of move. He'll probably take a Command Center after that. Yeah, I mean, we love the funky builds. Why not? Let's get a, let's get a little wild. It's always exciting to commentate some craziness, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, just some insanity. But right now, it seems so far we're going to have some standard stuff. Yep, I'm always looking at Terran Supply at this moment in the game the 12 gas has come and gone so this is just gonna be a normal opener but luckily for Hayat he does get off a first scout and unfortunately well, I was gonna say unfortunately for Sulky he's actually going to not first scout uh, Haya, but I forgot there's that overlord already overlooking the ledge so of course he's gonna see the command center come down and oh are we gonna gas steal no, he is not gonna oh. gas steal but this is kind of a middle of the road gas you know Last season, we were seeing a lot of two-minute gases from Zerg. This was a 215, so that means he's going to have a little bit more econ, maybe more like the 2.5 hatch style. Yeah, I feel like 2.5 hatch was more and more popular as time went on. People were saying, all right, yeah, I really want to get a little more eco with the third hatchery getting out and then fighting out with the Muta getting in a hive. So it seems like Soul Key wants to do the same here. I'm a big fan of the 2.5 hatch. You know, it's hard to judge how much Econ Zerg actually has. And when you go into this kind of, you know, middle of the road build, if they even build like one or two additional drones and you think that, you know, they're they're actually low Econ, well, you could be in big time trouble. All of a sudden, Zerg explodes. Maybe they get a faster fourth base. Maybe they they get away with murder, skipping on, you know, building a couple of muted lists that they don't need to necessarily build. And it can really be hard for Terran to recover if they ever fall behind. So, see uh, what this 2.5 hatch actually means. We do see two racks coming in. We do have gas coming in for Terran. I saw it was around like 320. So this is kind of a fast academy, I imagine. We we got three Marines moving out. I don't know about this, Raz. I don't think I've seen three Marines do a lot three, of damage. The three Marine move out. No, it's going to get wild out here. We're getting wild. Yeah. We're just going for it, baby. We're like, let's try to snipe some drones. I mean, I guess he's only seen two lings, and I'm not sure if Silky saw the three Marine move out. Oh, no, there are more popping out. So, uh, going to be a little difficult. Three Marine. Oh, okay. We paused. We paused. We learned to pause. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, he did move quite far, though. Like, if he had built four lings at the natural and then just randomly sent them across the map, I think he would have actually killed those three Marines. Of course, he doesn't know where the Marines are. It's kind of like Protoss versus Zerg, where they send out the Zealot, just sit in the darkness, just force some lings, but they don't actually know where the Zealot is. So uh, a smart move from Haya to just make that move, force some lings out and turn back around. But that looks like a decent chunk of lings. Okay, actually, I thought it was more than six, but it is only six. So uh, both players just gonna power up, really. That kind of posturing, you know, like you said, for in like in the Protoss for Zerg matchup, you just want them not to be able to build drones infinitely, right? Like that's the power of Zerg. If they can just drone, 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 all of a sudden their economy through the mid and late game is insane. So just forcing out a couple extra lings is good. And um, we see here that Soul Key is just poking in, trying to see what's going on. And that third hatch from Soul Key, I think, is already done, and I think the SCV survived long enough to see the hatchery. I guess I'm not completely sure of that, but I think that that is true. Regardless, he does scan the natural, sees nothing. Well, he does see gas, and generally when you see gas at the natural, that means mutas as opposed to lurkers. And I think the spire was going down in the main. Yep, there it is. So, we, was this a stem across the map? Okay, I thought it was a stem across the map with no medics, but there's two medics. Uh, this shouldn't really get much damage done, and that's actually a lot of links. That's like 
16 wings, man. Wow, those Marines are going to be short for this world if they decide to go into that natural. Luckily, they're backing up. Uh, we see Soul keep poking to see what's going on here. Oh, trying to sneak some links in the main. Ooh, picks off one, two, three Marines. Decent little trade there for Soul King. Yeah, that was actually not bad. He got three Marines for like four links. That's definitely worth. I would say, luckily for Aya, that Firebat getting the killing blow there is a big deal. You don't ever want to let any amount of links into your main, especially when you know Mutas are coming. Because if that disrupts your building of turrets, Oh man, can that sm snowball real quickly. So, well done from Haya there. You can see he's scrambling to get up turrets at his natural. I think he's pretty well set up there. I think I saw four turrets, but in the main, kind of skimping on the turrets, but you know, sometimes that can be good. That can allow you to scale into your tech faster. We'll see if Soul Key can actually punish it. Yes, I don't know, 22 drones, Naoken, is that normal for ZBT at this point? I feel like it's a little light. Yeah, that seems a little bit low, but as you say that, is this StarCraft 2 Raz? Did we just build seven drones out of nowhere in an instant? Now he's back up to 29, and that's pretty That's pretty decent econ. That's where you're really looking to be at at this point in the game. So uh, that third hatch larva really kicking in there, really giving a boost to his drone production. Coming into the natural, he snipes one SCV. This is such a hard position to defend for Karen because where do you put the turrets? You have four of them. And these Mutas are still just running in and getting SCVs for free. Mutas OP, man. They just fly in there, you know, snipe some workers to get out, no problem. Take a couple shots, get back over the the hill so they can't see them. It's unbelievable. Well, that's a pretty juicy scan right there. Not only does he catch the Hydra Den, he also catches the Queen's Nest. So he knows exactly what he's facing. He's facing standard. This is normal timing. I would say the Hydra Den seems a little bit late, actually. Uh, we'll see if he can actually punish it. The Lurker upgrade uh, is going to be quite slow, and he hasn't lost a lot of Marines, so if he can get out a sizable group of Marine Medic, I think he can actually punish this bottom left base. Yeah, I mean, that's just huge. If he can get that bottom left base, he would definitely take the lead in this game. Uh, you know, he's. I think Terran are always a little hesitant to move at it until they get a big, big bio ball because they don't want to lose it, but it seems like he has enough of them to move across the map if he wanted to. Yep, and we do see Muta still sharking around, trying to find a good angle. And Ooh. that is one of the best turrets I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever had a turret snipe the low health Muta. They always, for some reason, just want to damage the Mutas. Not actually kill them, but that one. That one was angry and took one down. Was there a ghost manning that? Yeah, it might have man? been. Just sniping it out? My goodness. <laughs> yeah, he had the range upgrade, too. Yeah, he did. Just boom. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, we've got what I would say is the most modern style right now. We've got that armory at the natural. That's not for Goliath. That's going to be for some Valkyries. And like I was saying, this army from Haya really has not been dwindled down at all. I mean, this is this is a huge army. This is two and a half groups of Marine Medic. And like I said, Zerg really got their Lurker upgrade quite late. Uh, he's actually going for the main. I think there's only two Sunkins there. Yeah, and the, the two Valks, and Valks just explode those Muta after a while, right? Like, they just hit them and just splash all over, so... Really strong move out here from Haya. Oh, really good micro as well. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, dealing a lot of damage to those Mutas. The Lurkers are actually going to be completed right at the last second. He is going to kill the Sunken, but there's the first Lur Lurker morphing. He's going to get behind the Sunken, and there's no way he can bust that. Imagine if... If Haya had hit this timing like 15 seconds faster, this game could have been over. So, uh, cutting it real close was Sulky, but he does get away with it. And, I mean, look at where he's at. He's almost even in drones. He's got a third base. And because he didn't take much damage there, uh, he's in a little bit of trouble. Or uh, Haya's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I think Haya was hoping that that move out would actually probably make a bust there. But, like you said, it was like 15 seconds too late. And now, trying to break up these ramps with Lurkers and Eggs and Muta, it's just so hard for Terran. Even with the Valkyries. I mean, how do you bust that? You're going to get so much AI into that morphing Lurker Egg. You know, now he's got to kind of play in transition to the mid to late game. Yeah, and when you go into this Valkyrie type of play, that means you're not building vessels. So that means there's no opportunity to irradiate, you know, the Lurker sitting on the ramps at bottom left. So there's no way that's going to get busted. 
I think at this point in time, Kai is just going to have to accept that, hey, I got to take a third base. I can't bust anywhere. And Soki's fine with that. He's on three bases. He's going to have a massive drone count. He's going to start flooding macro hatches. I mean, this is pretty much the dream scenario for Zerg. You take no damage with big econ and you got a third base already? That's amazing. Yeah, especially no vessels on the field. Like, oh, well, don't two. As they're like, oh, that's great. There's no way they can do any kind of just radiating enough of things. Like, my lurkers are going to hold my bases. Maybe they'll get a defiler. Oh, oh mute almost got caught here, but you're feeling really good. You're probably going to be able to push out that bottom left and take a fourth eventually. And once you get a four gas, you're just sitting pretty as Zerg. Yeah, you're really not scared about two lurkers. You know, I have our two vessels. I have some Zerg friends who say even two dropships can be scary, but two vessels, nah. You really need to start approaching something like six to eight to start really ramping up the damage. So for now, uh, Sulky's sitting pretty. We saw Macro Hatch going down in his main. I saw Double Evolution Chamber, I think, going down in his main. So he's got good upgrades coming in. And just now, highest third base is going to complete, I think. And seeing Terran's supply relative to Zerg, if you're only up 15 supply or so, that is not a great sign for Terran. So this is going to be really tough. And there's two more macro hatches at bottom left. Yeah, he's really amping up for this mid to late game himself here, Solke. He's didn't waste his Muta, kept him alive. He's going to be able to stop any kind of drops that are coming in. Getting it in a filer tech. We see three already. He is amping up, making sure that he's going to be able to get to this late game. Yeah, I, I see Haya taking a fourth base. And you know, more often these days, Terran players are rushing third bases, rushing fourth bases, compared to, you know, even just a year ago where a lot of Terran players were building seven barracks off of two racks and just trying to end the game. But I don't know if Haya has the really the map control to go for a move like this. This seems pretty desperate. I don't know. He's going to lose a vessel oh, no. one of these Scourge. And he Oof. can't do anything about the fourth base either. So he's just going to have to give it up. Yeah, I mean, this is where Zerg starts to get tricky, right? We have Swarm on the field. They can just kind of sit there. They don't need to push out. Like, how do you bust this, Terran? I mean, we, like you said, dropships could come in and do some damage, but it feels like Soul Key is ready for that move out as well. Yeah, and this is a bio play. I don't think in his main he was going for factories. So this is just going to be Marine Medic Vessel, which we did see last season JYJ play to perfection. I mean, he was just all over the place with his vessels, irradiating defilers left and right, not losing vessels to almost anything. But that type of style is so, so hard to do. We'll see if Haya can do it, though. But I I'm just so worried because I saw the Ultra Den finish. I know that plus one is done for Zerg. I imagine plus two is going to be kicking in soon. That means he's going to be even on upgrades. And like I said, this is four base Zerg. So the econ's going to be ridiculous. And supplies are not that high for Terran. It's still only 30 right now, but he does have the four bases running. Yeah, I was waiting for the uh, next step for Zerg though, but we just heard it and saw it there, the plague, right? Like all of a sudden plague gets onto the field for Zerg, and I think that makes it like just so much harder for Terran, right? Just getting your bio ball plagued over and over and over again. That's when all of a sudden the Lang Ultra really do some damage to your army. Like it's hard to fight at that point. Well, I actually do like that I didn't see any dropships this game. I I've noticed when I watch Soul Key, he's just like so on top of anti-drop play that it would have been a disaster for, for High if he suicided two drops. Uh, we do see that he has three starports, so this is definitely Vessel Man. There's five vessels right there, so now we're, he's really starting to ramp up the Irradiates. Uh, but, like I said, Zerg's about to explode with that fourth base starting to mine. He's, I mean, as you said, he's just sitting here, man. He's just eating the Irradiates because he doesn't care, because he knows his power play is around the 16, 7 minute, 17 minute arc, where his plus four kicks in. He'll be even on upgrades versus Terran. And he's just going to be able to swarm nonstop with those Ling Ultras and Defilers. Yeah, man, he's just sitting there in arc, man. I know. He's sitting there in an arc. Is it even an arc? Unbelievable. Doesn't even need the arc. That's how high level he is, right? Doesn't even yeah. need the arc. Unbelievable. Yeah, those Sunkins are not even an arc. They're just a straight line, man. He, he doesn't care. He doesn't even need the, that crazy advantage that Artosis is all, always ranting about. But. He's about to approach max supply, and I've been in this scenario before. 
My experience with Marine Medic doesn't go very well. I'm very worried for Haya. I, I, I love seeing even just a few tanks to help support you, but I haven't seen a single tank the whole game. In fact, I think his factory is actually floating. We did see the science facility move to the bottom of the base, so I think the add-on for Battle Cruiser is going to be coming, but not anytime soon. Like, they're definitely not going to be in time for this incoming Ultra attack. It's also hard to add Battle Cruiser when you're maxed out, right? Like, he has oh, yeah. so much bio and vessel, like, we're not adding too many battle cruisers here, and I feel like the bio forces just has a hard time versus the swarm ultraling. Like, how do you combat it, man? It's just not enough. We have too many marines. Marines don't hit under that Cheeto dust. I know. What, what's funny to me is I'm looking at Zerg supply, right? We're max. I'm looking at the drone count, 54. But on the field, I see what 10 mutas, three ultras, and 10 lings. Where is Zerg supply, man? He's max. Like, is it in his main? Yeah, he's hiding it, man. He's hiding it, waiting for the moment for Terran to move in. That way he can just go kill him. He's building up that Ultra count. You can see that it's only plus three armor for the Ultras right now. So actually the Marine Medic can trade pretty decently. Even though none of the Ultras died right there, they did suff soften up a decent amount of the Ultras. There's some more radiates going down. But another Scourge connects and another vessel dies, despite having triple starport we only have four vessels remaining and that's an ugly catch-up oh man catch up on the side and on the main dish here this one ultra just going to town on this bio force because with that plague they're one hit man nice and easy just yeah. swipe through and there is the critical plus four but look at that timing from Pina. actually he's at plus three weapon faster than i thought and you really really need that versus Ultra Ling. So for the next three minutes or so, he's gonna have an upgrade advantage. And that means he's in a surprisingly decent spot, four bases versus soon to be five base Zerg for Terran. That's 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 decent, that's manageable. But I am still worried that the vessel count's sitting at only four right now. And I still don't see any battle cruisers yet. Yeah, I feel like as this gets in late game for Terran, without that battle cruise support, Zerg eventually is just gonna start running you over like, just a swarm comes everywhere. Oh, oh. my goodness, another big plague. Like, this is the kind of stuff that just keeps happening. And next thing you know, this bio force is going to get wiped out. Yeah, this army is 100% gone. All of those marines get the catch up on them. They just get one shot. And he's going to have to retreat. But if we look at highest supply, it's almost like nothing happened. He's still at 180 supply. But the problem is he's just not cost efficient in these trades. Again, just like Solki, I see a decent amount of bio on the map for sure but it doesn't seem to me like this is 200 supply worth of bio he's got a lot of bio split up so he's not actually attacking with a with a huge army right now so i don't know if he can actually bust anywhere he sees the fifth base he really needs to do something about this one because once this gets up and running i don't know what you do at that point yeah now you and i were talking about this the other day once zerg gets a certain point it's almost hard to be on the map with just like bio force like what are you going to fight? What do you combat when there's so much swarm, plague? It's just so hard. It's almost better maybe for him to transition to some sort of mech player or something at this point. He's doing a good job here. He mowed down all those links. There's only one ultra remaining. There's not very much dark swarm at all left over. He's going to knock down, I think, the hatchery. He even has four marines at bottom middle knocking down that hatch. So he's doing a good job. And I think there's either battle cruisers or drops going down the bottom left. You can see that there's a couple of teal units over there maybe looking to snipe some drones or oh those are vessels so we could have an eraser there Ooh. oh no oh eraser. no five plagued vessels can they get away mutas they're sharking they want them oh no. they got marine support they're good they're good not gonna get splashed on well this is a freaking ton of production from Paya. he has 10 barracks or maybe a oh no you can't oh, leave no. those he has like 11 barracks and triple starport with battle cruisers coming. So this is massive production from him. But just five ultras and a single defiler are going to push this back. He's still very high in supply, 180 supply. But uh, now Zerg is starting to get on the offensive, and that's going to be really tough for Terran. Yeah, we see Solki never oh. really going below. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Couple vessels going down, man. Couple vessels going down. But I was saying, we don't really see Solki getting below that 180 mark. He is just so many hatcheries, macro hatches. He's able to constantly reinforce his army as well. 
Yeah, we see Haya actually floating a ton of gaps, like actually a ton of gaps. I'd like to see him mix in some fire bats, even though they're not great versus ultras. In this scenario that you see right here where the Marines are shooting the ultras and Ling's coming through the pack, fire bats can soak up and kill a lot of those Ling's very quickly. More vessels falling, and now it's starting to really snowball in favor of Zerg. Sub 150 supply for Terran. Zerg still pretty much maxing that hatchery at top left. I guess didn't actually die. It's still up and running. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was a sniper right now. Is he gonna get it? Oh, oh my goodness! Nope. Hundred HP left on that hatchery, man. Yeah, High is gonna have to really make some magic happen now. He's down 60 supply. Yes, he's technically even in bases with his fifth base at top middle, but just looking at army comp. Zerg has the more gas intensive, the more strong army right now. So many ultras, so many lings and defilers. Whereas Terran, I mean, it's just almost pure marine, really. Like, there's still no fire bats mixed in. This command center might actually just get blown up because of how much damage lings deal. Yeah, I mean, cracklings are just crazy, right? They just, just insane amounts of damage. Yep, and those. Irradiated ultras back in the EG days, we called them the haymakers. We just need to see the plague so that they can run Ooh. in and one shot everything. But luckily, they all die. Wow, just unbelievable! What a plague! Catch up spreading all over the place, baby. Oh no, man. When, are, when do you think we're gonna see Zerg mix in that relish? Think oh, we'll ever see some relish from the Zerg play? At this point, once he knocks out this fourth base, he might be feeling real good. He might throw some relish in there. Yeah, he might even take over that command center and say, Hey, oh, I saw my up. favorite. Yeah, he sees. He might be like, you know what? I saw that bot of Artosis versus Snow. I can do something similar. <laughs> I'm going to build some infested Terrans. But I don't see any queens yet. But I do see more and more orange streaming across the map. Man. The non-stop line, it's connected from top right to bottom left at this point. Just non-stop flow of Zerg units, and we see highest supply down to 110 right now. Really struggling, having a hard time. This bank is getting depleted, and there is the GG. Yeah, GG coming out from Haya right there. Well done from Soul Key. I really did think Haya had a, a decent position getting the three bases, the four bases, but the main problem for me was he just couldn't damage anything. The Valkyries, yes, they damaged the Mutas, but he didn't breach anything. And like I was saying, he didn't get critical mass vessels for so long that he couldn't even deny the fourth base really at all. And versus someone like Sulky, if you give him a fourth base for free, uh, you better have the ID flash, because if you don't, you're in big trouble. Yeah, I mean, I don't play Terran, but I don't know what you do as Terran to attack into that swarm defile like just defiler swarm plague lurkers like it's so hard to bust those bases once they're secure it's almost like you have to stop that zerg from getting that fourth base or else you're just in trouble because once they get there it's just they macro and can sit like we didn't see Zolku do anything crazy but he just macroed up and really well and was able to push across the map and kill haya yeah it's like terran versus protoss you know terran just wants to sit there until two one or three two you know, at the 14 minute mark and then they start moving across the map because they hit all their breakpoints. Same thing in Zerg versus Terran. Sulky literally just sat there until 16, 17 minutes, waited for his plus four armor, and then he gets out onto the map because it's just a massive power spike for him. Also big econ for him. So it was well done from him. He played to the strengths of Zerg and Haya, he just couldn't come, uh, couldn't keep up really. I would, I would have liked to see him use his gas a little bit better, even though he had a lot of vessels. I mean, like I said, it was pure Marines. There was no AOE at any point, like Firebats. I mean, there weren't any tanks. There weren't any Vultures with Spider Mines. I would have really loved to see him uh, mix that up. But it is what it is. He'll be in the loser's bracket and waiting for the uh, winner of Ample versus Paralyzed, which is going to be our next matchup. Here we go. Yep, so in the top left are Steel Protoss. It is Paralyzed. And in the top right are Blue Terran. 
it is ample. I really like ample. I think ample has some good builds. He's willing to mix it up too. Like he'll play a two fact, two timings, like a six fact. He'll also go 14 CC, go into the heavy upgrades. You really don't know what he's gonna do. Uh, and also he has varying like aggressiveness. In Terran versus Zerg, you know what he's doing. He's stemming across the map. He's going for the throat. But in Terran versus Protoss, uh, you never really know with him. So I'm curious what he'll come up with. Ooh, we see a pro coming out of here from Paralyzed. Probably going to be a forward gateway with some Zealot Pressure. The question is going to be Zealot Pressure into a Nexus or Zealot Pressure with gas? Yeah, so Paralyze, not someone that I see stream often. And I don't think I've really seen many games of him in general. But in ASL, I feel like I remember seeing him Forge expand. But I do agree that this is going to most likely be the gateway expand. And there it is on the minimap as you can see. So we're going to have an aggressive opener. Now, I didn't catch whether this was a 9-gate or a 10-gate, but uh, what are some of the differences between a 9-gate and 10-gate? Like, if, if I 9-gate, for example, what am I looking to do? If I 10-gate, am I going for a fast nexus? I feel like if you're going to go in 9-gate, you're going to probably put down 3-zealot almost, 2-3-zealot, really get pressure. Where 10-gate's a little more, obviously, eco-friendly, where you can transition more into that 15-gas, into a Nexus, or you can just keep producing Zealot and go for a Nexus. So the nine gate is more usually Zealot heavy, where you want to put a lot of pressure onto the Terran. You're trying to just not let them expand, just making making their life miserable with as many Zealot as possible. Well, you know, I got to point this out, Raz. I got to do it. Do my eyes deceive me? Where's that Rax? Is that at the ramp? I thought that was illegal. I thought Terrans didn't know how to wall in 23, 2023. I thought this was a 2001 build. There's no way. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. The Nyokan wall? Have you been talking to Ample? Did you give him some tips? Yeah, Tell him what's I, going on? I might have hit him up. He might have been, I might have said to like, hey, you know how you stop Zealots on Eclipse? You just don't let him in, my man. But look at that. He actually puts the depot at the bottom side. So it's technically not a wall. But the reason I like this is it'll because of this position he can do a single depot wall if he needs the wall he can put it up if he doesn't need it he can just micro and unfortunately there was no scv in position to wall this off so the zealot does get in and we'll see how much damage this zealot can actually get done Ooh, oh my god wow this, when you see this on ladder this is when you just leave as protoss because you know you're in trouble if terran can make moves like this with their marines <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is just crazy micro, not giving anything away. And there it is, third Zealot coming out. But, my goodness, just no damage being done right now by these Zealots. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. That, that, that's honestly really <laughs> impressive. He only got hit, like, I think technically three and a half times. I don't think the Zealot got off the, the second hit right right on that uh, Marine we just saw. Uh, okay, he's, he's, he's gonna fall there, and he is going, oh, he, he's gonna lose a third Zealot, man, so oh. you were right, it is three Zealots, but that's a gifted Zealot. Yeah, at this point now is, Protus, you gotta feel behind. You've given him three Zealots for two Marines. Like, if Ample really wanted to get crazy, he could pull the boys, man, and just go kill this gateway in the front. Well, you know what's funny is, as you said that, I was looking at Ample's gas. Now, he did not pull off of gas, so even though the Zealots didn't kill many Marines, I would say Ample did kind of drop the bag a little bit, mining so much gas. Uh, I thought he might actually two-fact after he did all that damage, but he is just going to go for a command center follow-up, and Paralyze, he's being a little greedy here. He's going to go for a Nexus also off of just one Dragoon. I think the second Dragoon is on the way now. Yeah, you gotta be careful. So when you do this move at his Protus, if you lose all three Zealot, there is a counter push for Terran available where they can literally just come in with a couple Vultures, Marines, some SCVs, and bust you. Because if they know the gateway's in front and they kill the gateway, you have no production. Like, you're just, you're just dead. But Ample here just taking the command center, putting it down. His command center went down before the Nexus, so you must be feeling good about that already. Oh no, oh no. Yeah, oh, and, no. and what's funny here is if the blue name tag said Terror or Artosis, 
those goons didn't scout that command center. I mean, this is just paralyzed, assuming, hey, I'm playing a pro gamer, he's gonna likely expand. But if this was a two pack, I think paralyzed would just be outright dead. For now, this is still not a great position for him because he is trading goons for vultures. But at least he's even on probes. At least he's going to have uh, a Nexus equaling the command center timing. But yeah, I'm still liking... Oh, what the heck is this, Raz? You see that at mid-right? That's a Ru third command center. Wow. Ample just feeling so strong right now. Put down my is going to take this. That's just wild. Talk about ultimate greed. I don't think that's going to get scouted either. Like, why on earth would I ever move my Dragoon over there? I oh, know no. mines are already out. There's, like, no chance in hell that this gets, gets scouted. And that was already a damaged goon. And then it took a mine shot, too. So he kills that goon. So he's killed, like, three goons, three zealots, I think for, like, three marines and two vultures. That's just insane trades. Yeah, Apple just way ahead. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, he blocked. <laughs> I thought I was going to get some of the vultures in, too. I was say, wow. Paralyze, you're in big trouble, but he's already in big trouble. We have a th how many times have you see in TVP where there's a third command center down before a third nexus? I mean, that's just wild. Yeah, that is that's crazy. And the armory isn't even that late. 6:30 armory. You know, it's not exactly the fastest, obviously, but this timing is still gonna give him a 13:32 one timing. So not only is he going to have the biggest econ ever, he's gonna have ridiculous upgrades. You know, because of how fast he got this third command center, this may not even be for 2-1. This could just be a 1-1 one, one timing and just flood factories. You know, plus one is not a massive breakpoint, but it's still pretty damn strong. So we'll see what he wants to do with this. I mean, just the eco going into the mid game, right? It's just insane. As pros, you're going to see this and be like, oh my goodness. Like if I was paralyzed, I'd be panicking, putting down gateways, trying to get some sort of bust off, but it's just probably too late. Yeah, luckily for Paralyze, he took a weird angle. He went to the rally point and then went to the third base and then into the main. I don't know why he didn't just fly over the natural straight into the main. So he got a little bit lucky there that he at least gets to see how fast this guy took a third base. And he's going to try and punish it. But I just don't know how you punish it unless Terran doesn't have siege mode. And I think he does. I mean, he's got to have siege mode. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's he's able to punish it now. I mean, he went reserver first with two gateways. There are more tanks than there are goons right now. I mean, it's just impossible for him to do any. Oh, double robo baby, we're going speed shuttles all day. Double robo all the way. Uh, if I was, if I was ample here and I lost this game and I watched the replay, I would be so mad. Do you know why? Tell me how many gates Protoss has right now. They got only two, only two gateways. He's got two gates, two robos. Every time you build a shuttle, that's two zealots. I mean, that's a lot of resources into not units, you know? So it's like, how how could I possibly lose to a guy that has no production? So I would be furious if Ample, if I was Ample and I lost this game. Hopefully, Paralyze starts ramping up the production because... We know Ample's got Mega Econ. We know that it's going to start kicking in really soon, and he's going to desperately need to have a lot of gates. I don't think Shuttleman is going to be the answer unless he can somehow delay this push. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Double Robo is very meta right now, but I don't think this is the scenario for Double Robo. Like you said, he took a third command center really fast. If he just floods factories, he should be able to run Paralyze over. Yeah, I, I think that it's too late for Paralyze to go for something like Arbiters. I think it's too late for him to go for Carriers, obviously. So I don't mind, uh, you know, going for Mass Gates or Reavers or, you know, maybe two or three shuttles. But if he's going to go for that, we got to get that Citadel down these up. Because I think the way that you're going to stop Ample's push is you're going to have to just have God Tier Storms. But I think the Citadel actually just started. And that means that we are light years away from having Storm. Yeah, and Ample scanned the double robo with a low gate count. I'm surprised he's not thinking about, hey, like, let me get across the map. There can't be much going on here. Well, it is actually going to be 2-1 style. So this is going to mean that Ample is not looking to attack for at least three minutes. 
He's got 63 SCVs. That's a good SCV count. Doesn't need any more. So he can just completely focus on units and factories. I think he's probably just going to use these vultures he has on, on the map to get some control, deny bases, make sure this guy doesn't, you know, get away with the fourth base. So that one that he's taking bottom left, I expect to be shut down or at least take heavy damage. We do have the three shuttles sitting in the main waiting i guess for some more for him to drop somewhere i don't i'm not sure exactly what he's waiting for but that is a fourth shuttle that just came out yeah i think we're uh i know this is the meta but this is to me is not the right call here from paralyzed to try to play this way we're gonna drop we're going for that massive drop in the main but i, I don't know if this is gonna do much damage at this point with ample getting a third base early and flooding factory so spread away there it goes well, there were two Goliaths in the main. Well, there's not any mines set up. There's really not a lot of defense here. Where are the Goliaths? So he does unload. That's a lot of zealots, and I, yeah, there is double Reaper. So this could deal a lot of damage. This was actually a really good angle from Paralyze, and the Vultures are just kind of funneled right there. So he's going to lose a lot of the Vultures for free. Not very many tanks have died, if any have died, but he does kill like 15 SCVs. So overall, this was a pretty damn good trade. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to go this well. I thought it would be a big problem, but those Reavers just nailed so many SCVs oh, and no. Vultures. Ooh. Yeah, I actually think this is enough damage. I, I think he killed enough SCVs and killed enough Vultures that this was actually enough for Paralyzed to be back in this game. The factory count isn't even as high as I was anticipating it to be. It's just six or seven. Paralyzed did not lose bottom left so he's got four bases he's up 20 supply he's up 15 workers that's great for him Ooh, a little drop though from ample here gonna take out some probes and snipe them from the high ground yeah and i don't think protoss has any idea maybe he does because he has four dragoons moving over here well the probe is gonna see the bad news that the two tanks are already here but I think three goons are going to shut this down, and Ample didn't realize that there was a probe that went up there, so these tanks may just die. Can he micro it, baby? Can he pick it up and drop it? Oh! There oh! Go. oh. Good pick up. All right, Here come so, the vulture support. Yeah, he's going to oh. shut this down, but remember, those shuttles from uh, Paralyze are still out on the map, and he's just going to unload and say, see you later to this drop. Oh, well, well, maybe? Yeah. That's a lot of vultures. A lot of vultures to deal with these zealots. So can this, I don't know if the zealots are all oh, here. Two more shuttles probably going to take it from there. But still drawing a lot of attention here from Paralyzed. Trading us. Ooh, big connection for the mines. No zealot speed yet here. And I have more 13 minutes in. I'd like to have zealot speed. Yeah. At this point. Oh, Templar is getting picked off. Oh man, that, that is a lot of Templars, but it's hard to control that many Templars, so we'll see if he can actually get down some critical storms. Terran, despite losing so many workers, has shot up in supply. He's actually even ahead of Protoss right now. Lower SCV count compared to probe count, though, so that means he's going to have a stronger push, and 2-1 should be kicking in pretty soon. So this is a massive breakpoint for Ample. I think if he wants to go at the most vulnerable uh, point in the game. I think now's the time to go. Yeah, I think it'd be a good time to go. You know there's so many shuttles going down the map. You know, he wasted some units dropping your base. You probably are pretty close to supply, which he <laughs> is, but here we go. Thank you. The shuttle man, baby. Shuttle man. I know. You know, when shuttle man, like, first started coming out, I think, like, a couple months after people made it popular i remember seeing players like light experimenting with valkyries like you build like i think it's even just three of them and you can one volley kill shuttles so imagine if you had three valkyries here all these shuttles were clumped up <laughs> he just killed all six or seven of them in an instant but i haven't seen a single valkyrie yet that is so many shuttles looks like he's got his eyes set on the natural this time again not any mind set up but that's a lot of turrets yeah, he may wait for Ample to move before he goes into the base. Like, that's definitely a, a move Protus can do here. You let the army of Terran move out, then you drop in the back, so they're kind of stuck. But this is a big, big Terran. Oh, army, here we go. I like it. He saw, he saw Terran move out into the counters. He did lose the shuttle for free, though, but he gets into the main. Oh, no, unfortunately, the key unit, the Reaver, 
gets sniped down, and it looks like he must have lost the shuttle that had the Templars, because I only saw one or two unload, and he really didn't kill that many workers. Okay, actually, they were just in the shuttle, but uh, that, I don't think, was enough damage for yeah. Paralyze. Not enough damage, but at least he was making force in the Terran army to come back. Yeah. But, I mean, you got our macro ASAP. I don't know if we have enough gateways, because we're not maxed again. So. Oh my god! Oh, uh, big fight! I see it! Oh my goodness! Hey, okay, what's going on here? Storm oh. down the mine, blow up! Oh my goodness, this Terran army is melting! Oh my <laughs> goodness! A single mine softens up so many tanks, then comboed with double storm. I thought that was a huge tank army, and it was, but it disappeared in an instant. We've got 40 supply lead for Paralyzed now. He's still got a shuttle alive, probably has some Templars in there, yeah. But this push was denied and ample, even though he's still in a, in a decent position, having four bases with a good SCV count. Resetting the tank count, that is so punishing. The best Protoss unit in this matchup right now is the spider Mine. It's not yeah. even their own, man. It's not even their own. Oh my gosh, there's another great storm. It's a lot of the vultures. You know, when I saw that mine, I thought we were going to have a silent control moment all the way back in, a, what was it, like 2002? Uh, reach shuttle bomb on silent control on nostalgia. That's, uh, I thought that was going to be 2.0. It could have been. I mean, that mine exploding <laughs> plus that storm was just crazy. I mean, like 10 tanks and vultures just died. They just went down, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, and pro God, that is so many shuttles. So many shuttles. It's so many Templars, too. Like, think about it. If he doesn't get off storms, like, that's, what, eight supply and shuttles? It's really hard to cast that many storms, as you know, as a Protoss player. Like, this is, like, 30 supply and units that could really do no damage if you're not paying attention. But uh, he's moving around to the third base. It looks like he wants to go into the main again. Yeah, I mean, you're talking 10 supply per shuttle. Like, yeah. that's so oh, much. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is what I was worried about. Look at that. He, he doesn't really get almost any damage done. Yes, he unloads some zealots, but tanks were already set up. Goliaths were set up. I, I'm i curious, did Ample really send any units back? Like, when you make a move like this, this can be a good move to, you know, go and attack the fourth base, but I don't see Paralyzed doing that. So he just loses a bunch of shuttles for... Not much damage. Yeah, I, I think this is where, for me, the shuttle style gets a little weird, right? Like, we saw before the drop and then the counter. Awesome. But when Terran set up like this on four bases and are content and they're sitting in their main, it's hard to just keep doing these this drop style. It's just so much supply, so much going on. You're almost better, I feel like, macroing up and transitioning to later game. Well, that tank count is starting to get menacing again. I see it getting larger and larger. We also have multiple vessels out onto the field. EMP would be devastating, especially since we see even Archons getting mixed in to Protoss' army. We do have Protoss on, what is it, five base, soon to be six bases. 3-2 has kicked in for Terran, though. I think Protoss is sitting at just 2-1 right now. I mean... These trades, this is where it gets hard to play this style. Like, trade against these mech armies is very, very difficult. Like, the 3 2 Terran mech just begins to start to melt this Protoss army on the ground. Yeah, especially when you have a lot of supply in the shuttles and the Templars, and it's going to be hard to even get in range of landing those shuttles. Luckily for Protoss right now, there's only two Goliaths. You really need to have three to start two-shotting shuttles, so there is still a window of opportunity for shuttle bombing to be successful. Here we go, he's gonna try and land here. And, uh, there's the Templar, he unloads, but he's storming a D-Matrix tank, so that didn't really do much damage at all. And this army of Paralyzed got melted. Yeah, this this always hurts, man. This is what I'm talking about. The Protoss Grand Army versus 3-2 mech is just so difficult. You need to make sure that you are hitting phenomenal storms. And if you're not, the mech will run you over. Yeah, and again, it's just, there's more and more Templars being produced. Like, this single group of Goons and Zealots, I think there's only really a, one more group of Goons and Zealots. So it's really like 24 units plus like 8 Templars, which is a lot. But again, you gotta land the storms. Those are some great ones, though. 
but it's still even supply, 180 versus 180. The tank count is not getting whittled down at all now. There's just so many of them. There's like 24 tanks right there. Yeah, that's what uh, nightmares are made of for Protoss at this yeah. point of the game, man. You see 24 <laughs> tanks that are 3-2 just rolling over to your face. Like, you're just like, oh, man, this is horrendous. It's such a hard thing to stop. Yeah, well, you know, when Protoss is desperate, when they start hitting that K button, the DT does shut down the mid-right base, but Terran can survive for an eternity on four bases. Like, even his fast third base is still only halfway mined out. I like what Paralyze is doing. He realizes that he can't engage the army anymore. He needs to go for a counter, but Ample's on top of it. Look at that, he's just shadowing the movement. Yeah, these small groups of... Terran are just dominating the Protoss groups here. Oh, well, we do have some Storm oh here. We can get some of the Storms off. Oh, he targeted the Templar really well done there from Ample, man. Targets down those Templars so they don't get off and wipes out this small group of Protoss as well. He did kill five tanks, though, so that is a, a decent loss, but the army is just massive. It's like five Zealots, a goon, trying to fend off this huge push. The counterattack to the third base is happening. Right now, there go the shuttles. But look at this, he's already set up. There's wow. even a bunker here. That's gonna mess up the AI. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough, really good Whoa. storm. Whoa, yeah. But that... the problem is that's whatever units are on the map for Protoss or what's on the map because Ample is now breaking into the main here and is gonna cut it off. Yeah, and unfortunately for him, it being Vermeer, like you can see he's even sieging main gateways from the low ground. Like, he doesn't actually have to push into the main to get key buildings destroyed. He's even taking the third base right there. He's expanding <laughs> into Protoss's main area. But this counterattack, not only did it kill all the tanks, kill all the SCVs, he may even kill a command center. And Paralyzed does luckily have more gateways at bottom left, so he can actually produce units. Yeah, he can definitely start getting that refugee Protoss style out here where he can start building gateways all over the map if you can get the bottom right, but oh my goodness, big storm from Paralyzed. Paralyzed is doing a much better job than I thought, man, of being able to fight this army and getting damage done down to Ample. Yeah, I gotta say, these storms have really, really been on point. Like, every time he's storming a tank, like, it's hitting multiple tanks, like three or four at a time, and he's actually killing them off. It's not like he's just damaging them, and then they get repaired and, you know, last forever. Like, he's actually killing the tanks and even though i think paralyzed is gonna lose his main he still has four bases at bottom left he just needs to start building some more gateways there because i don't think he's getting out of this i don't think there's a, a real chance of the zealots being able to get down the ramp unless again we have some great storms here he goes but i only see two templars Ooh, big and big what i would love to see him do is just keep the templar on top of the ramp like let ample take that base and storm the scvs from the top use oh, yeah. dragoons and everything and just and just kill everything from the high ground. Look at that, he may actually be able to bust out with the units coming in from the bottom side. There's an Archon that got in range of two tanks and knocking them down. There's still a decent amount of army for Paralyzed at the bottom side. Supplies are surprisingly close, 135 to 130. Oh man, that goon got melted. Yeah, that goon didn't like to be here. The tanks helped yeah. him out, exit the field quickly. See you later, goon soup, baby. But there's no Goliath, so this shuttle bomb could deal a lot of damage. He gets on top of three tanks, on top of two tanks, Ooh, takes down. Wow. He's gonna take down five tanks for just a single zealot bomb. No, oh, no, only three, but still, that was definitely worth. Oh, it's hundred percent worth. Well done from him. But now we see Terran kind of getting into this tricky part where they push through. But he is taking the base top left, which is going to help him secure. Like, two base Terran at this point is really all Terran need, right? Oh, but two Reavers, two man. Two Reavers. A double yeah, low picking in. Finally, it's about time. Uh, oh, man. He needs to secure this high ground because now when Protoss tries to do a flank, if the tanks are on the high ground, you know, they're just so hard to get damage done from the bottom side. We even have... Uh, well, we have some... 8 to 10 goons trying to cut off reinforcements. I think that's a smart move. He actually did cut off reinforcements for now. Oh no, the mine! Oh, I thought that was going to trigger. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I agree. I, my protus heart was... Oh, baby! Get in there, Reavers! Damn. Yeah, get those SCVs. 
Damn, this is a really scrappy game. Like, this is... This is really close, like 130 to 130 supply. Remember, Paralyze still has four bases, but I do notice that the bottom middle base has no probe mining there. The one that he has at very bottom middle. Uh, so he needs to get some probes over there, because as you can see, that base is mined out. Yeah, he's got to do as much as he can here to just... Okay. That was a little crazy there, but he's got to do whatever he can right now. Just really start resecuring bottom left and getting his gateway count up. Get his unit count up because he can continue to fight here by killing all his SCVs, but he's got to have the probes in the base going. Yeah, now that he's lost all of his gateways up here, like there's really no chance of defending this anymore. There's no real chance for him to storm drop that base anymore. I think his best option is to start taking the other main, which is what you can see he is trying to do now. He has a probe over there. Uh, yep, there it is. There's the Nexus. But those probes that he has at his third base, bottom left, really needs to transfer them somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he did kill a lot of SCBs. Ample on 46 SCBs. Yeah. I mean, he's only mining out of two bases, so that's a healthy account. But if he continue to harass a little bit and macro out of the bottom left, he may be able to drag this game on. Yeah, for sure. This is definitely... Still playable like ample has a huge army right he's got 45 workers he's got 170 supply but when you're this low on mining sometimes it can be hard to pull the trigger as Karen when you know Ardos is still on four bases like you could get worried like you know should I attack now like how much army does he actually still have because he's scanned and he knows that there's like 10 gateways at bottom left so there's definitely still uh, production capabilities for Paralyze, but it looks like Ample's realized that he's got a big lead. He is going to continue pushing. Yeah, oh. and Ample just melting these goons away. Oh, he needs to transfer those probes desperately. Three Shuttle Man not giving up, baby. Three shuttles. Not, not giving up. And with all these mo uh, units moving towards the center, there's actually, I think, an opening towards that top left base, but Ample, he is scrambling. To oh, there was definitely no chance to harass that case, I take that back. The entire Terran army move there was like, absolutely not, we will not allow it. We will not have this. Oh, it's gotta man. be careful with the shuttle. Oh, man. Okay, wow. they make it out, they make it out. Well done. Whoever's driving that shuttle should be, you know, promoted. <laughs> well done. I can't believe that they made it out. Those, those Goliaths have plus three weapon, man, and they still made it out. But we do have the probe transfer at the bottom right. 66 probes for Paralyze. He's got huge econ, just needs to get a consolidated army. I think that's a, another Dragoon Zealot counterattack to the top red, to top right, and it does draw Ample back. Look at this. Yeah, Ample, I think, is really worried about these counters. I think he's kind of like you're saying, though, he's kind of like worried about, like, hey, I know Protoss is on four bases plus, so, like, I don't want to just start trading off things because I'm only on two. If I trade a base for a base, I'm probably going to be behind, so he's probably just be waiting, getting secure, mining up areas, get, oh, some siege tanks caught here. I was saying, just sieging up in good areas, waiting to get 200, 200, and just kind of moving across the map again. We do have, again, shuttles moving towards that base, but Ample not really turning around this time, but there's so many tanks here, I don't think it's going to work anyways. Double Reaver unloads. Those two tanks at the backside really saving the day there. The Reavers did not much damage at all, and that's going to be the go switch for Ample, he knows that he killed the majority of the army and he's going to be looking to knock down some Nexuses. Oh yeah, he killed all those dropships, all those units, he knows the first supply is going to be low. So here we go. Ooh, oh, big EMP, baby, big EMP. Oh my god, those dragoons are funneling down one at a time. I don't even think they got off a single shot. And this may just be the last ditch effort for, for Paralyzed. He's got a stream of, I think, Zealots moving to top left. But there's still tanks here, there's still vultures here, there's still mines set up here. And this base is 100% dead. Yeah, I think we're going to see the end here from Paralyze at any moment. He tried his best, played it out well, but Ample just a little bit too much in this game for him now. And he's going for the killer blow bottom left. Yeah, the shuttles did way more damage than I was thinking, especially after Ample's opener with the three command centers. I thought, you know, this is just too much of a, a commitment to the shuttles. I don't feel like you're going to have enough units, but the storms have just been amazing all game long. I think we've reached the point of no return. It's 
sub 100 to 5 for Protoss. I imagine that this is most likely the last ditch effort. He doesn't have a single storm available. His units are just funneling in. Really the only unit that was actually doing any damage was the goon there. And there it is. GG comes out. And that means that we are going to have a Terran versus Zerg in our winner's match. Ooh, baby. Some more TVZ. But, no, Ample played really well there. I mean, super greedy third command center, but I feel like he felt that he killed so many Dragoons that he could not feel the pressure from Paralyze. So he was like, you know what? I'm just going to take it. It's no big deal. We're just going to go for it. Yeah, it was definitely the right call. And, uh, like you said, losing so many Goons and losing those three Zillets really was really punishing to paralyze but he transitioned out of it well the shuttles did really well the zealot reaver drop in the main did a lot of damage really got it back in the game and the storms were really strong so if there is a rematch ample's gonna have to be very cautious because he had a huge lead and paralyze still brought it back to even at certain points i think so i'd really love to see them rematch uh later on in this group if that happens but we're gonna be going into i think our winners match now so we can get into our next game. It is going to be Soul Key versus Haya, or not Haya, versus Ample. Oh, maybe it's not. I think we're going into Premiere again. So let me see what ma uh, what the actual matchup is. Oh, it is. Okay, for some reason I didn't think we we're going to have a run back on Premiere as our first map, but it is going to be Ample versus Solki is going to be Vermeer, and we have Solki at the bottom right, and in the bottom left, we have Ample. All right, man, here we go. This should be, I think, a really solid matchup. Two extremely high-level players too, right? Like, both these guys, ASL bound all the time, so it should get exciting. Yeah, and with it being Vermeer, where you have access to three bases, you know, right next to each other, or right next to your main, and then also even a close fourth base, I would like to see similar build to what we saw Haya play, but I personally want to see the mech switch. I uh -oh. think that's the type of play that can actually handle split map Zerg, but we'll see if that's what Ample wants to go for, and this could already be uh, a decent sign for Ample. He's going to go for a low ground depot. We could actually have 14 CC if he's feeling spicy. I thought we were going to say an 8 racks. I thought he said that SCV out early. I was like, oh baby, forward 8 racks, but... <laughs> Nope, not today, not today. Yeah, I also thought we were going to see an 8 racks. If, if this was Rush, 100% of the time, I would have instantly bet on 8 racks because that guy, he 8 racks is at least 50% of the time, it feels like. But it is not going to be 14cc. He is going to go for a semi-wall here. There's going to be the gap between the depot and the racks and, of course, the gap between the racks and the egg. Uh, it is not a fast pool opener. It is an 11 hatch, though. Oh, no, it's not. It's a 12 hatch. Yeah, pretty standard play here from Soul Key, but I was really hoping for a little more aggression from Apple, but you never know. I guess he wants to play it safe. Game one, best three. Just getting into the a regular game here. And now, because this is... Even though it's a similar format to ASL, you know, it's this, these games I don't think are streamed live like for example i don't think ample got to watch haya versus sulky so seeing I, I don't think he's able to like blind counter this 215 timing that we see again so um he's gonna be unaware of at least sulky's uh most common follow-up i would say so uh, but like i said this is again another 215 hatch Another two point four two fifteen gas. So there's gonna be another two point five hatch to build. Look at that skipping Marines going straight command center. Yeah, I like Ample's response here, just putting it right down the command center. But you know, Negan, that's where a tournament format, like you were saying before, really comes into play, right? Like being able to see games versus not can really depict what kind of build orders you want to do. And for Soul Key here, he can use the same exact one because no one is Ample has not seen it yet. And it would be critical for this SCV to see where the third hatch is, whether it's at another base, whether it's in the main, you know, at the ramp or next to the next to the main hatch or that hatch. Because when you got your double scan, if you miss the scan and you think they're going spire and they're actually going lurkers, 
well, you're dead. I mean, it's just that simple. So game he needs to keep... over, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's just game over, and you can't put in a quarter and revive yourself. Like that's just it. So oh. he's got to keep this SCV alive as long as possible, and it looks like he will because the hatchery has already come down. Yeah, he's, and he's going to be able to scout that hatchery. Like I said, it's big. Oh, we see one racks eBay here. A little variation from the build we saw in the last series. That was TBZ. So. No two racks. We're going one racks plus one. Yep, really fast plus one and really fast academy too. So he's going to have all the upgrades at a really fast time. And that means that well, he's going to have to be careful with his mutas because those marines are going to be packing a real punch. There's the spire. And Ample doesn't strike me as a Valkyrie player. Not that I've watched a lot of Ample games, but from what I remember... I think he's more of like a four racks type of player, just play into vessels. And, you know, last game, or in the Haya series, it took Haya a little bit of time to ramp up his Marine Medic. So if he can get like the same amount of units, the units like the two and a half groups and just move out, I think Sulky's gonna really struggle to deal with that since all the Marines are gonna have so many uh, upgrades so quickly. Yeah, the plus one is pretty strong here for the Marines to pop those Muta. Oh, so we're going to go into four racks here, three racks. What do you think the follow up's going to be? But we're going to see three racks going down, maybe even four. Yeah, for now it's just three. I think that SCV is going to build a fourth right now. Yeah, there it is. So this is pretty much as I was expecting. So he's going to have a ton of Marines in the next two and a half minutes. They're going to have all the completed upgrades. Plus one's definitely going to be done. Range going to be done. Stem going to be done. And we do have. Zolki just about to pop his mutilus. We were talking about the drone count in the Haya series. Is 22 drones too low? Well, I would say we got the answer because it's still just 23. So it seems like that was a normal amount of drones for uh, this matchup. Yeah, I think we see a lot of Zergs make like right that magic number of seven, eight muta, and then they go back to droning a little bit. We'll see if Zolki does the same here, if he's just going to push the muta building and press ample more and more yeah seven pretty much one shots all the key units the marines one shots the scvs don't think it one shots the medic you need to have eight for that but uh, it's kind of hard to snipe the medic because they start with the plus one armor so it is just seven right now he's going to start looking for some scv kills and so he is slightly mixing it up because it's actually taking a low ground base, and that may not get scouted by Ample for a long time. Yeah, and that's a greedy base to take. If he gets to hold it and secure it, man, you get almost pretty much guaranteed to get your fourth base, right? Like, if you can get a sunk and some lurkers down there, then you're just feeling real pretty as Zerg. Oh, yeah. If you get this base, as a Terran player, you hate your life. Especially when you're playing somebody like Solki, who's so good versus drops, because you may be thinking like, oh, well, he's going to take a fast fourth base, so I'm just going to go, you know, drops and punish it. But Solki's always on top of drops. I, like, never see him take damage. So if they get a fourth base real fast, and you go drops and it gets shut down, the game's over. I mean, it's just done for. Like, there's no recourse for him. So uh, Ample's going to have a really tough time if this base gets up and running. And I hear so many scans going off. But you can see the minimap. It's completely dark, so he has no idea where that base is. Yeah, and we see the muta count get up to 12. We'll probably have a group of 11 here just sniping this bioforce down, engaging on the other side of the map, so he'll buy himself time. Really well done because he did take that gritty base, so as long as he keeps that bioforce here, he'll be feeling real good going into mid late game. Yep, and this is a big bio ball. Remember, in the Haya game, Haya was out on the map at, what, nine minutes? Ample's out on the map at 7.30. Of course, he doesn't have the Valkyrie, which does pack a lot of punch, but this is a very, very strong Marine Medic Ball, and he's just going to counter. He's not even going to try and deal with the Muta counterattack. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea here, Naoki. I mean, there's a lot of bio still at home, even with this four racks. So, I'm not sure he can counter and bust him, but he's decided to pull back and, ooh, good snipe there. If Solki goes right now, I think he easily wins this fight. If Ample sinks up three groups, I think Solki gets murdered. So it all comes down to this. He cannot let the third group sink together. That's too much DPS, and he's not going to. Here he goes, Ling Muta on top of the army right now. Here 
be a big moment. Get the reinforcements first. Wow, murders that group. Can he turn around and murder the other group though? I, I don't think he can actually take out that bio ball, but now with 12 more lings being built, now I think he can actually kill their remaining bio ball. Supplies are even, 80 to 80. And remember, Zerg already has a third base. They even have plus one weapon on the mutas already. So a third group did not sync up. So this army, unless he's got plus one armor, think this army is not long for this world. Oh man, these poor Marines thinking they're doing a great job sniping Overlord. Little they know they're about to die. It's over for them. Yeah, this one, this, this army is going to get no, oh. There's no chance of, oh my god, there's just a decimation. Oh. And like, look how many lings Zerg built. If, if I was playing this right now from Ample's point of view, I, even though I lost my army, I wouldn't even feel that bad. And the reason is, is I would see that Zerg built so many lings, like, that could have been drones. But if we look at what's actually happening in the game, <laughs> Toki has a good drone count. He's sitting at 32. Yeah, I mean, good drone count. Droning up again here. And how does Ample ever get more pressure on the map for the next minute or so, right? He's lost, like, four groups of bio. Like... Now Sulky knows, like, hey, I can, like, 40 drones now. Look at that. He's already catching up because he's just decimated the bio ball on the map. And here he comes. Oh, cute usage of the factory to limit the damage onto the SCVs. Mutas are going to back off. Lings are going to back off. But as we stated, that third base was not punished at all. We've got almost even worker count. We've got basically even supply. I don't see any high-tech units from Terran yet. No vessels, no tanks, no Valkyries. And so this just looks like another game where Sulky's gonna go unpunished, have four bases really soon, probably just sit there, wait for Ultras and upgrades to kick in, and then Terran's just gonna get run over. Yeah, I mean, once he secures that top right base as a fourth, I mean, what can Terran do? He's lost so many units. You know, he has no real map presence yet. We see vessels finally coming out, but the filer mound is already on the way, almost complete. It, it's gonna get really hard here, I think, for Terran soon. Well, I do like what Ample is doing. Uh, I talked about how in the past, a lot of players would go into seven racks, kind of delay their third command center in, in favor of building more units. I think in this specific scenario, you've got to go for the win. As I say that, he puts down a command center though, so it's not a committed, really committed seven racks. Oh, we'll see if he can actually make this happen, though. That's obviously not going to work. That's four lurkers stacked up. Yeah, there's no bust in this right now, but got to be careful, right? You don't want to lose this fireball as well if he gets trapped by the mutiling lurker from behind. But oh, oh what? he's going, baby. He's going. We ain't waiting. Well, if you look at the map, actually all the mutas and the lings went to the top of the map for some reason, and what was four lurkers a moment ago just gets eviscerated. What is going on? Lurkers trying to come in and save the day. The mutas and the lings are not synced up. We have marines are shredding so many of the mutas. Oh my goodness. Big moment here. I wish he didn't attack up the ramp, but he is still going to pick up all these mutalists. Killed a ton of drones. We got a radius going down. Oh my goodness. Dark Swarm may save the day here for this hatchery. Of course, Dark Swarm is going to save the day. When does it not save the day? But that was an amazing bust right there from Ample. Look at the supplies. What was even a moment ago it has plummeted for Zerg. Yes, Zerg still has three bases, but now it's 95 to, to 55. Now those Mutas and Lings are off the map. Drops all of a sudden are very dangerous. Also, just busting the third base is dangerous. Oh, do we, have, we don't have enough here. Oh, let's be a little more. He, you're right. He could just go there and try to bust that as well. We see Sulky desperately putting Lurker in. His only to follow her through the night is to try to get a Dark Swarm down. Secure this base. That was exactly what Ample needed to get back into this game. He's also done a good job to keep his vessels alive. That's five vessels. So we're really ramping up the irradiate damage. Because he has seven barracks, look how much blue is still out on the map, just rallying across the map. He's got 120 to 75 supply. All those lurkers are gonna are gonna die. If he mixes in some fire bats, unlike Haya, he may be able to just stim in and win. And you know what I noticed there? Was there a connected Nidus? I didn't see any. There's the fire bats. There's the, that Nidus is connected somewhere to the main of Zerg, not to the natural where it is, but there's only one lurker, man. 
He might decide to go for it here. He is. And we are a stim. And here we go. Oh yeah, this, this is Ample Man. He's 100 percent going for it. He does not wait around. He does not care about a single burst. Okay, there he goes. There go the fire bats. And he's gonna focus down the Nidus. The fire bats are still alive, still shredding. That lurker, that lurker dies. Wow. The Nidus is still alive though. He needs to get rid of it. Oh he my gets god. Rid of it. Fire bats are alive. This might be it. Raz, he may might just actually kill Solki. I think he did kill Solki. What a bus man just goes through, snipes the Nidus, uses the fire bats to take down both lurkers. Oh my oh. goodness, and there's GG. Oh my wow. I thought Ample was in so much trouble. I thought he was mega dead. The Mutalings did such a good job to clean up the Terran army, but the one moment that he had to bust the natural and the third, he really hit it and he capitalized and he is able to take game one. The micro at the natural was insane, man. It was insane oh, yeah. to get through those four lurkers. Like I was like, what did we, no way we're gonna bust this, right? Like we're not gonna stim and go. He was like, watch me, I'm going in, baby. We're gonna push this in, we are going in. Yeah, when he stemmed in, I'm like, dude, this is suicide. And then I look at the mini-map, and all the mutas and the lings are at the top side. I would have to re-watch the replay to see, like, what was the reason that all those units went up there. If the mutas and the lings kind of just sat around, like, in the darkness, but still near the natural, I think the entire army would have just gotten crushed. But uh, somehow he drew him out of position, and he really capitalized. And that means he is up 1-0 in our series. Remember, this part of the bracket is going to be best of three so Solki not in the loser's bracket just yet but ample one game away from making it out of the group and making it out in first place yeah here we go bbs baby bbs get him ample get him okay in the bottom left, our white Zerg, it is Solki. And then in the bottom right, really hitting a nice timing last game, it is Ample. Yeah, Ample was impressive, man. I, I didn't think, I thought he was in big trouble. Solki got that top right nap, but he said, no, don't worry, guys. Nah. Sit back, sit back, relax. I got this. <laughs> and it's something to point out at the very end, like, Ample, and maybe he rallied his starports to top right, I'm not sure exactly, but he had drop ships there. So like, he, if that didn't win the game outright, he was definitely gonna try and test the multitask of Solki, because obviously Solki's in panic mode, just trying to defend top, top right, right? So if a drop comes into bottom right, I don't know if he would have been able to hold both, both sides of the map. So it was still, uh, Great use of the starport, I, I was going to say at the end right there, to not just, you know, autopilot into mass vessels because the dropship, I think, would have ended the game if the top middle attack didn't actually work. But again, we've got another depot at the entrance. I mean, he must be watching my bods, man. He's he's like, you know what? If I can wall, I'm going to. He likes it. He's like, Naoka does <laughs> this. It must be the way. It must, it must be. be the way. Now that's an interesting wall. I <clears throat> gotta say, I don't think I've ever seen this, but I think that Rax touching the rock at the top side, it's gotta be Ling tight, I would imagine. Otherwise, putting this Rax like this is a, bit, is a little bit interesting to say the least. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the two gap or last game, maybe he's not too worried about it. Maybe he has a read on Sol Solki or something that he's a guy he won't Ling pool first or something but I don't know big rest to me yeah I'm not a big fan of the two gappers in Starcraft definitely not a big fan of the unsuited two gappers in poker either so he's not oh. gonna get punished this time around because it was not an early pool but it again is another 215 gas and I think we're gonna see a CC before Marine here again I can well yeah Yep, gets the first scout off, and anytime you can get the first scout off and see that you're not facing cool first, 100% you're putting down that command center. That's exactly what he does. Now, you know, he could really skimp out on Marines and just go into a fast 2 racks if he wanted. When I first became aware of Ample, 
that's what he was doing back then. He was rushing a two racks after Fast Command Center, rushing Academy, and stimming across the map, literally down to 10 health, just trying to get there before the uh, sunken finish. Now, that's a 255 gas. That's an interesting gas timing. We'll see what he wants to do with it. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see that just fast eBay, fast Academy again, or are we going to see some type of valve play? Who knows? What does Ample have up his sleeve? Yep, There's the be eBay. The, it is going to be the eBay. So it seems like this is going to be the same build as last game. When you have a 255 gas, you do have options where you can go into tech if you want to, whether it's 111, whether it's Wraith, or, you know, you can play like me, go Valkyries. Oh, now Ooh. that was a great deny right there. Wow. Good little block there, right? Every second counts at this level, so way to deny it. And he sees that it's 2.5 hatch again. Yep. Good scout right there. Plus one needs to start pretty soon. And there it goes. So he's going to have seven minute plus one timing again. He's going to have all of his upgrades by the time you just get out. So again... I'm expecting this to be same follow-up, four racks, why change it? You won the game last time, but if I was him this time around, the one thing I would uh, be a little bit more cautious is maybe I was a little too far out, out on the map with my two groups. You know, he couldn't ever get the third one synced up, but other than that, uh, it really worked out pretty well for him. Yeah, I agree. Don't max with what's not broken, right? You won the game followed the build up it's pretty much the same exact scenario as last game just like you said tweak little things and try to push through yep a couple of links were built only four for now so not a big committal there there's the second racks there's the third racks and more than likely fourth racks coming down this time around soul king not going to take a low ground third base he is to build it in the main and there it is Maybe he felt having that low ground third was a problem last game, so he was like, you know what, let me just play a little safer and standard and take this high ground one with a ramp for my lurkers. Yep, and there's the banking up of the larva for the mutas. I think he's going to be able... Well, I actually think one of those is an, is an overlord, and I think he did mix in one drone, so it's probably going to be this exact same drone count, probably 23. It is not lurkers this time. Look at Ample, though. He still has no comps at, man. He's just powering. He's like, you know what? I saw. Okay, I guess he has that as natural. Uh, but he doesn't have it in his main, so that's just going to give him a few additional SCBs that he normally wouldn't have, wouldn't have. And at pro level, even having one or two workers really does scale really hard. Is that a bunker? No, that's a turret. Yeah, he's just empowered up. Get as much production as he can. It seems like Ample, like you, you know, mentioned last game, likes to get on the map a lot faster. He wants to have some kind of map presence. Oh yeah, and you can, you can tell from last game, like he's not worried about just countering your counter attack, right? Remember, Mutas were acting like they were going to go into his main. And he's like, yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to turn around. I'm just going to go kill you. And uh, he called Solki's bluff. Solki actually had to turn around because Marine Medic are just flat out stronger than Ling Muta, but so far no damage done from these Mutas, and as I was saying earlier, like, plus one is about to finish, so these Mutas are going to get mowed down. Yeah, there's only five there this time, so they can one-shot the Marines, but not an extra strong group there. Yeah, and plus one is definitely done by now. That Muta needs to be very careful. Yep, there it is. Plus one's already done. Four Raxes are done. Marine count hasn't been dwindled down at all just now is it gonna be eight mutas but the marine ball is gonna be pretty menacing in even just 30 more seconds from now and this this is where it gets awkward for zerg because look ample has moved out of vision and now if you're zerg here you're panicking where's the army where is it it could be anywhere yeah the bob oh bio ball moving towards that top left base as well yeah, like, you assume that Terran moved out, but Terran could have just ran into their main, right, and just sat there. Like, you don't actually know where it is, so it's very clutch that he does realize that, hey, this army is out onto the map. It is now getting up to a sizable mute account, and there is a decent amount of wings. Even if it's just eight or so, that's still going to soak up a lot of hits. Yeah, 
I feel like these ramps here are very conducive for the Muta harass, right? Like trying to walk across, Ampo trying to keep his bio balls together, much together as he can. And we do see a lot of lings, like you said, Naokin, and you mentioned it last game. If those are drones, I mean, those are lings, they're not drones, so. Uh -oh. There's no bunker, there's no turrets, and I pin the Marines on the low ground. Uh -oh. so actually, we, we may have base rage here. Right this is way different than the game before. The Lings and Mutas can actually end the game, but at the same time, if you don't have Sunkins, this is a Thorax, you're playing with fire. This could actually just be Sulky getting eliminated, or not eliminated, but sent to the loser's bracket. Oh my goodness, here he goes. Like you said, he's not worried, he's just stimming and moving, oh, baby. Oh my gosh, the Lings are doing a lot of damage, but not that many SCVs have fallen, but the Marines are still ridiculously strong. They've got plus, oh my gosh, those, those, those shots from the Mutas have done so much splash damage. Now the Marine ball isn't that, that big. What's it, 12 Marines maybe? But there's only four, three Mutas left. Oh my goodness, has Ample done it? Has Ample busted through? I, 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 I'm not sure if he did yet because there's only eight Marines left. There's seven Mutas. Damn, the Marines hit so hard. If he can focus down, oh, oh man. Wow. He's taking so much damage to the Mutas. Like every time he comes in, Ample instantly retargets. But as I say that, of course, he doesn't do it right there, but he gets that hatchery. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, he kills the hatchery, kills that mining, re-secured his base. And he killed a lot of Muta in that trade as well, man. And it wasn't just like, you know, he killed the hatchery. He killed a ton of Muta. Uh, Soul Key was forced to remake a bunch of them. And now I feel like it's two base versus two base. Has to be advantage, Terran. Yeah, and yeah, I was going to say, what do you do if you're Soul Key here? Like, you built so many Mutas. It, it, he may have not even upgraded Lurker upgrade because, you know, he had he was panicking and just had to build as many Mutas ASAP. So I think actually going Guardians is a, a smart move. They would probably come out faster than actually getting the Lurker upgrade and then morphing Lurkers. Uh, and you know that this guy doesn't have super fast vessels because the Lings were in there and disrupted uh, the production of those Starports for so long. But we do see the Starports are, are pumping out vessels right now, but I don't think he's gonna have enough Irradiates to deal with seven, eight, nine, ten Guardians. Uh, he killed a racer them. That's maybe his answer. Oh. Racer those guardians, baby. Get in there. Oh, wow, actually, he already did have the lurker upgrade. I wasn't aware. So he does have lurkers. Only a couple, though. You can see he's not retaking his natural, though. That drone is sitting there like it tried to build, but didn't actually build. Yeah, and Ample just trying to power up again. He's got the racks, trying to get the vessels out. Nose is two base versus two base, right? Like, he is in no rush to get across the map. Well, I can tell you this, if Ample does go for a counterattack here and just allows Zerg to counterattack himself, Ample will lose to a counterattack this time. Lurkers in your main plus Link and Mutas, that's not a winning scenario. However, this is not a winning scenario for Zerg. He just oh. used commands to Lurkers before oh. getting any shots. The Lings got absolutely obliterated on the bottom side. Mutas got obliterated too. Those Marines have 1-1 one, one upgrades. Like, Lings don't do any damage to them. Also, I don't think the Lings had Crackling upgrade. So that was an amazing trade for Soul Key. Now he doesn't really have to worry about anything. He's got double irradiate. There's no Guardians. Oh my goodness. Ample just getting after it on Soul Key. We see an amazing engagement for him. And I was just countering and pressuring. He has map control, but not able to deliver the finishing blow yet. Yeah, but this is a really dire situation now. That, that's got to be for Plague, I imagine. I, I, I don't... Well, I don't know if he could have Plague even upgraded by now. Like, Consume takes a decent amount of time, then Plague is pretty long, too. But look at Ample's worker count, man. 53 workers. His econ is booming. I see a huge blob of brown in his main, so that must be, again, seven racks. It looks like he's building a command center at the top right, so he's going to be taking a third base pretty soon. There's no lurkers on that ramp, Rez! Uh-oh, we're going up there. Here we go. Oh. The Nidus isn't done. It's not done, so he just walks up. The lurker wasn't in position. He's targeting it down. The Nidus can out. Oh he my. gets it. Oh, no. It's it was... Holds these marines. Oh my goodness! It was literally like two health. 
and it didn't complete. So now Sulky, this is his last ditch effort. He has to counter. And <laughs> look at this. Wow. It's Fire Batman. He loves them. He must also watch the uh, Nyokin stream where you can select Fire Bat Drop because that's what was about to happen. <laughs> yeah, it was about to happen. Here he goes, Lurker's Burrow. But guess what? Fire Bats can actually damage the Lurkers underground. However, get a Filer Surprise. One health. If they oh, get oh, oh. It was just a bait. It was just a bait, and that oh, means that all these no. workers are going to die. Sulky lost his third base. He's just now retaking his natural. He has no econ. There oh, it is, GG. I can't believe out. it. Ample coming through with the win, man. I can't, I can't believe it, man. Sulky, I think his best matchup is Zerg versus Terran. Like, I would probably take Sulky as a favorite in ZVT versus almost any Terran. And for Ample to take him down 2-0, that is impressive. Yeah, that was really well done from Ample, man. His moves were decisive, and he got it done. Yeah, it, it definitely decisive. Like, it, he was clearly saying, like, if you counterattack, I'm counterattacking. Like, that's just his game plan, and it was the perfect call. It, it won him both those games. Obviously, the big bust at the natural was amazing in game one, but his hold in his main uh, last game, after losing, what, like six Marines or seven Marines on the low ground, and you just have Lings on top of your barracks, that is so hard to recover from. Yeah, but he, he was able to snipe that hatchery and kill Muta. Like, he got so much damage on yeah. those counters, like you said. He was like, oh, let's just go for it. We're, we're in. Like we're, yeah. we're, one of us is dying here. Let's make it happen. We're in. All right. Well, we're going to be going into our losers match, which is going to be Haya versus Paralyze. It is going to be a Terran versus Cross. And again, we're going to have Vermeer. Let's get into it. So in the top right, it is Haya. And in the bottom right, Playing impressively with the metal example, it is Paralyze. Yeah, I wonder if Paralyze will continue with that strategy here in Vermeer. Will he go for the double robo mass shuttle or will he mix it up? I mean, people do like the shuttle play, especially on Vermeer, because of the third that Terran tank and the high ground. You can drop on top and go for bus. So, see what he goes for here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. I actually kind of want to see his forge. Uh, Nexus opener if, he, if we do have another low ground pylon so far. I don't see a probe going out I feel like he would have needed to send one by now So more than likely this is good, just gonna be a normal gate opener in in your main Don't think we're gonna see three zealots Unless he's got something spicy planned Nope So far normal. We'll see if he throws the gate down if he just makes probes That'll be the next indicator of what's going on here Yep, and, you know, this is not Terran versus Zerg, so you can't really 8 racks in Terran versus Protoss. I know there was some recent video about, like, a 9 racks, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be really coming into the meta. It seemed quite strong when it was actually initially shown, but I'm sure by now Protoss players have figured out how to counter, and it was not anything crazy. We do have the standard racks follow-up this time around. Oh, never mind. It was ample that wall. I was going to say this time around, Haya didn't wall, but that was not Haya playing the TVP. We do just have a normal Rax placement this time, and it is 12 gas, so no gasless. Yeah, I'm surprised no gasless. I feel like it's so strong on Vermeer. A lot of Terrans, I think, including Flash right now, when he was playing, was going gasless on this map. Yeah, well, if you talk to TT1, he tells me all the time how Imba gasless is. You're up like 10 workers or something versus Protoss. You can A move the Protoss players quite often Ooh. and just get an easy victory. Those Terran apes, you know? Yeah. Just A moving on Protoss. We're approaching 100 gas for Terran, and this is the moment of truth. Does he channel his inner Artosis, or do we play a normal game? If the answer is we are going to have a normal game unless this Marine can push out the probe ASAP and he decides to put back onto gas, but I don't see that happening. Looks like we're just going to have normal openers from both unless paralyze the one that wants to get frisky. Nope, range. Nothing too crazy. 
Everything's standard so far for these guys. Everything's standard. We do have the in scan in scout from Haya. It allows you to still have the option to bust 12 nexuses if you want to. If you do the normal, uh, you know, just counterclockwise or clockwise, um, oftentimes by the time you scout the close positions, you can't actually commit to a bust unless you had already been blindly committing to it. So uh, that's the reasoning for the cross scout there. He's not committing to a lot of Marines. He just has three down the command center. Yeah. A lot of times it's almost good to send this first Dragoon across the map instead of chase the SCV to try to force that bunker or at least fly some pressure, make Terran a little scared. Because you're like, this is just Terran getting everything for free, right? I know, I know three Marines kill the Dragoon, but just to at least faint some pressure I think is important. Yeah, well that's what I like because, like you said, it forced out a bunker quickly. Also, you get to catch the Vulture to see, like, like if you see the Vulture, well then you know his hat on was late, right? But you do have to be careful because the Marines and Vulture do uh, pack a punch there. You can see that Dragoon has already lost all of its shields, uh, but the Vulture does manage to sneak on by. Second Goon going to be uh, sneaking up with the other one. Rain should be kicking in in the next 15 seconds or so. He's going to be putting pressure on this bunker, and he's going to have to pull multiple SUVs because he built this one Vulture. Yeah, I mean, hitting the hitting the bunker, forcing the pull is huge here. Definitely helps, especially because that command center timing was very fast. So if you want to try to get as many SUVs off for mining as you can to kind of balance the game out. Yep, there we go. And this is really all you're looking to do. Just force Terran to waste time repairing that bunker. But he did lose track of the Vulture, and, you know, I'm not a Protoss player, but I can assume that this is kind of a not ideal situation, because if you run into mines and lose your first goons, and then Terran went for, you know, two-fact follow-up, you're just outright dead, right? So it's imperative that he finds this Vulture ASAP. Yeah, now he's starting to look for it, but you're you are definitely right. You want to find this vulture. You want to know what's going on because if it lays three miles behind two goons and you and they just die for free, there's definitely a timing for Terran to just kind of run you over. Yeah, we don't see this two fact this time. It is just going to be armory follow up. So five minute armory. This is, I would say, very meta these days. Even faster armories are meta these days. Just really prioritizing the two one or even just prioritizing rushing plus three ASAP. Even if you can't get out onto the map at 13 minutes, well, you can get out onto the map at 15 minutes with 3-2. And we saw in the Ample game versus Paralyze how fast those Dragoons and Zealots melted the plus three weapon. What I am most worried about this game is, okay, for a second, Haya was up like four workers, but Paralyze slowly closing the gap. Yeah, I mean, taking his third right here, six minutes, 6.15 is, you know, if you're to get OBS is definitely the time you can get it in. 6.15 is perfect. So as soon as I can get it down, I'll probably add a robotics as well. Even a little earlier, probably should add the robotics for a reaver next. Yep, there's the third nexus for Paralyzed. He didn't put it down uh, at, a, at a greedy moment. He's got four goons, he's got two gate, he's got observer. This is a pretty safe timing, but Ample just doing ample things. He's in there, man. He's gonna shut down this probe line. Could buy one probe, two probes, maybe three? I think three pros for two vultures, that's worth, especially if you can get a full pro pull like that. Yeah, Haya's got to feel good about that. He's like, all right, yeah, just uh, just getting some harassment done, making it happen. Turn out in the front now to stop an observer slash shuttle. If it's going to be with the Reaver, like Terran, when they do this, is quite annoying. Yep, and now I'm just looking for that starport from Haya if he wants to get into the the 2-1 timing, it needs to be coming in pretty soon, otherwise he would be kind of in a, a weird upgrade situation, and he would kind of, I, I think would be obligated to just flood factories. Still no starboard just yet, not SCV that I see by the turret, or I guess that's actually a tank. Is that a third fact? I think that's a third fact in his main. Maybe he's looking to secure his third base with a little more units here? Yeah, you're right, it is third factory. Yeah, third factory, you know, in the past it used to be one fact into two fact, you know, starport upgrades and then four fact. But these days, because of how good Protoss players have gotten at picking you apart with shuttles, 
more often you see the third fact, so I'm not surprised at that. But I'm still waiting for that starport. Oh no, don't tell me it didn't build. You know, SCVs don't build things now. Just the I've, way they do, they just forget it. They're just like, no, I'm not doing it. I've heard. I've heard that. I've heard from uh, a few streamers that certain buildings don't build when you're tearing. It's on purpose, you know, SCV's trying to, you know, hurt you. Yeah. You're like, they're like, how can I make this race more painful to play? Oh, okay. I'll just not build. You know, you know, actually, sometimes they just outright don't build, like, they don't move. It's not that you just go up there and don't have money, but if you're, like, in the sweet spot, if you want to call it sweet, they, like, actually just don't build. Terran, just a struggle out there, yeah. you know? Just Terran, just... Hard yeah. life. Yeah, such a struggle having 85 damaged units in the tank. Such a hard life. But uh, we did see he did finally build the starport. Command Center is going to finish relatively soon, too. His plus two timing I don't think is going to be delayed that much overall. Maybe like, you know, 15, 20 seconds, something like that. So it's still not a big deal. His SCV count is still looking really damn good. 55 to 58 and he's done a good job to Ooh. keep protoss from four bases yeah it's a big mind connect there really softening up those goons there we go and he's gonna easily be able to take this so overall i'm, I'm really liking Kaya's position right now goliath is in position too so he's gonna push oh my Ooh. god he almost lost that reaver for free yeah paralyzed got to be careful there that's a big hit on that reaver and that third base is very secure. Paralyzed probably not happy he doesn't have his fourth down yet, knowing that it's a third command center. Definitely advantage to Haya. The fourth base, about halfway done for Paralyzed now. I can see that Paralyzed is starting to ramp up his gateway production. I don't see any, like, big buildings near the bottom of his base, which is where you would often see the key tech buildings like Stargate, Templar Archive, things of that nature. So, yeah, you can see the Templar Archive is just now starting. So, again, it seems like we're going to have uh, um, Templar Man. I don't know if we're going to have Shuttle Man because I didn't see a double robo, but definitely going to be Storm on the menu. Yeah, I mean, Storm so key in the matchup. Definitely another thing that's just meta right now where you get a couple of these speed shuttles, drop them in the NAT, use them against the armies in these high grounds of Vermeer. You know, I think it's definitely the way to play right now vultures i like the poke there even though he doesn't catch anything you can see that the nexus was about to finish so easily he could have caught probes mid transfer so a good idea there doesn't actually have success though and fifth nexus going up for paralyzed so this time around he really really wants to get that big econ up and running he's got a good probe count too to saturate all those bases so i'm really liking it i would like to see more gates though i think we're still only at around eight and you can see Haya ramping up his factory count. Eight gate versus eight factory. Generally, Terran's going to win that, so really need to get some more gateways. Yeah, he needs to do that. Oh, there are those three shuttles. Shuttle man back. He's, he's back. back, baby. <laughs> but, yeah, no, he's doing a good job. He definitely wants to take bottom left. He even should consider setting a probe to top left just to start taking those bases to make it harder for Terran. His macro is obviously very strong right now. He's up 40 supplies, so... Doing what he needs to do. Though I don't know if a bust here is the answer. I don't know. We gotta make sure we're not poking in too far. Well, something to consider with this map being Vermeer as opposed to something like Circuit Breakers, for example. Three gas for Terran, pretty damn fast. He's gonna have a lot of tanks uh, available to him. I think he even has triple add on. Yep, there it is. He does need to get his add on for. The science, or for the science vessel though, because EMP obviously going to be critical for dealing with storm, whether it's D Matrix or whether it's EMP. Yeah, and I like to see Paralyze really start, like you said, amping up gateway count. Even put in the bottom left right now, spread out. His oh oh no. no! Oh no! Here, no cannons at all you know i was wondering how this guy is able to afford so many nexuses and the reason is because he didn't build any cannons at all and he does get punished here he loses at least seven workers now karen did lose about eight vultures but that's fine because if so many factories 
he's gonna be reaching max in like two cycles anyways, and he wants more tanks, so this is a fine trade for him. Yeah, and, oh, oh no. no. No, don't do a paralyze. I'm actually getting like some best vibes, you know, because best is well known for having really good production, but he moves around with no oh. observer just like that, and unfortunately he lost both of his reavers in the shuttle. This could be a doom push. Oh man, that's painful. Losing both rivers and shuttle is huge. We know what these rivers can do now. They pick off so many units, they slow down pushes. When you lose two like this, it's just so difficult. Now, I'm not sure if that's a command center floating to top middle, or if that's like the racks or eBay or what this is, but here come the shuttles, but luckily for Paralyzed, those Goliaths were not focused, so he does or he is able to unload, and he gets off some decent storms, but good control of the Vultures. Look how many tanks there are, but still, it was an effective trade for Paralyzed somehow. He gets a lot of the Vultures. He didn't lose that many goons, so trading just sell it for Vultures and some tanks. It's, it's okay, because he still has five bases. Yeah, I would like to see him just have wiped what was there in the middle, and then go deny the 12 o'clock, not push into the next couple of tank lines. Force Terran to unseige and move into you again with your storm, you know, instead of trying to push into the Nat slash third. I think that would have been a better option for him. Yeah, well, the fact that this building at top middle is actually command center, high is in a really freaking good position. Oh man, see you oh. later. Just one shotted right there. Yeah, Templar wasn't having a good day. He's like, I'm oh. here. I'm dead. I tried. <laughs> Did what I could. War base Terran. I've heard so many things about how Terran can just survive forever on four bases, how strong they are with four gas, and with Terran also being on even supply, this is probably about the, the worst possible scenario it could be for, for Paralyzed here. Yeah, and Paralyzed has not added bases, he hasn't added gateways bot left, so he's kind of stuck right now in this like mid game comp. He's not really getting to that end game comp that he needs. Yeah, I'd like to see what Protoss' upgrades are, because we know Terran's 2-1 right now, but plus 3 is going to complete pretty soon. Okay, plus 2 weapon. That's that's good for Protoss. He definitely needs to match weapon upgrades, plus 3 versus plus 3. Like, it's it's just so important. So, this is not bad for Protoss, but supplies are still even. Terran's tank count is just getting bigger and bigger, though. Yeah, eventually this Terran ball is just going to push down here, and... That's a lot of tanks, Naoken. A lot oh, of cool. tanks again. <laughs> yeah, that's a ton of tanks. Oh no, he found the Templars. There goes over one, two. He gets three of them, and he's gonna. Get, of course, he's gonna get into the natural. Also, pick off some probes while he's here. Why not? You know, we're here anyway, killing Templar. We might as <laughs> well take a couple probes with us as well. Let's, you know, take it down. I'm worried though for Paralyzed, man. I don't know. I'd like to see him take another base or start it, you know. I feel like we're stuck right now. We're not like building our infrastructure any further than what it needs to be. Yeah, he'd had, you know, good success versus Ample with great shuttles and great storm and stuff like that. He's got good production there in his main. I think all that he's really lacking now, if he's not going to go high tier tech units, is he got to at least have. You know at least six to eight more gateways on the left side of the map so if you do get contained you can at least have flanking potential but if all of his productions bottom right all Haya has to do is set up a contain at the natural and then just go and pick off every base on the left side because there will be no answer instead we are going to have what looks like probably a huge engagement over this center position yeah i mean i'd love to see parallels get on the high ground here with the templar Drops them as you engage, Storm. A little Vulture Raid, oh, gonna probably deny bottom left a bit, Naokini. This is a pretty big yeah. one right here. This might trigger a, an attempted bust by Paralyzed. It's not enough Vultures, I think, for Paralyzed to try and go for the bust, but he may think it is. It's only 10 Vultures, but this is so many tanks. And anybody that's played Protoss knows tanks just obliterate everything. It doesn't matter if you're lacking oh. 10 Vultures. And these mines are just doing crippling amounts of damage. Just can't run into these mines like that. You're softening up your goons. They're going to be goon soup soon. If once they fight this actual Terran army, gotta be careful. 
That is a wow. dead nexus. Plus three vultures. They hit pretty hard. I was gonna say, I can't believe they just sniped that oh, whole no. nexus nut. Oh, the shuttle too. Haya here, man, and the observer. Haya doing a great job, man. Little, little things that are making big, big waves, you know? Yeah, that's a tilter right there. If, if this was a ladder opponent, I'm sure Protoss would have been tilted and just gone for it because slowly Paralyze is getting picked apart by Terran, and he still hasn't done anything to the tank. Look at this, goons are, are losing to Vulture. I think he's got to go now. He's got to pray for another drop on top of the mines and hope he can trigger some kills on the tank. Instead, his army split up. I don't think this is going to work. Look how much stuff dies before they even get to the tank. Can the Templars change the story, though? That's Great Storm, but there's just not enough. Oh, my look at Proto Supply Naokin. It just plummeted. It's like they jumped off a building and flew way to the ground there. My oh, my God. Goodness. Yeah, and that's not what you want to see if you're Protoss. You do not want to see, you know, 10 rallied tanks instead of 10 vultures. That is just no no bueno for him. And we may see GG in just a second. There's no hope to stop this. This is just so much Terran. Yeah, Protoss struggling here. His Zealous got EMP'd as they were at the Nat there, too. And now trying to funnel out of this, it's just almost impossible. Yeah, all Terra needs to do is move like uh -oh. an inch forward so he can hit the units coming down the ramp. And of course, I uh -oh. thought that was going to trigger. I thought it was going to kill oh. at least the goon. I thought like three goons were just going to go pop. Yep, and he knocks down that Nexus. He's going to knock down the Nexus at the third base. Paralyze still has two bases, but he doesn't have four like he had versus Ample. So he is going to be weighed down way down in terms of econ he's obviously way down in terms of army it seems like it's just a matter of time at this point yeah more paralyzed i think gathering his thoughts here because he must know that this game is over he's not secured another base terran is on you know five bases at this point mining from three of them like that you know there's just no hope here yeah and even uh, Terran's even taking all of top left. Like, he's going to have six bases in a second. These eight or six or eight tanks, I don't even think they can be stopped from killing this Nexus. So it's going to be Protoss down to one base in just a moment. Yeah, we just see higher rallying tons of units to the bot left there. Ooh, does get those that group of tanks with the dropships. And does Whoa. clear here, Naoki. Wait a second. Yeah, what's Wait going on? Wait a second. I should have known from the Ample game, seeing those shuttles, uh, that this guy could make magic happen. Supplies all of a sudden, pretty much even if you factor in the difference in workers. So, paralyzed, he's got a fighting shot. He needs to definitely get another base, though. 48 Pro. It's okay, but really needs to start... Uh, building maybe like five or six of them to really get his econ back into shape. The tank count has, however, been dwindled down by, I would say, at least 12 to 15 tanks. So it's definitely going to be much easier to attack into Terran this time. Yeah, I mean, we see that highest tank in top left and kind of securing it. I think he knows at this point, like, hey, even if I don't go for the killing blow, as long as I secure all that, the game is mine. Like, I'm, I'm sitting pretty. So, I think he's just taking the safe route here to close this game out. We got Goon clearing out the minefield on the left side. Unfortunately, that shuttle got picked off and... Okay, I thought actually vultures were going to set up a mine flank, but instead... I'm just going to pick off a few vultures for free. Oh no, that base doesn't have cannons. Oh, <laughs> goodbye, Oh, probes. these probes! No! Maybe it'll focus that down. I mean, that's that's eight vultures. They have plus three. Yeah, goodbye, Nexus. Oh, man. Things are becoming more and more tricky here for Paralyze. As Haya just making some incredible plays, man. Right well, decisions is, all the way. Haya's playing really well. He has had really good defense this entire game, slowly building up that tank count. And then just waiting for... Paralyzed to make the mistake and then strike him. I mean, that's just what you do in PvP. Same thing in Zerg versus Terran. You wait and you wait and you wait. Wait for your moment, and then you hit him. And that's exactly what he's done. And 
we were talking about how Protoss had a mid-game tech. Well, we're past mid-game now. We've got to start having you know, the carriers, the arbiters, or we've got to have some insane Templar drop, which we just haven't had this game. Yeah, you need some of that AoE or late game scaling as Protoss. You can't just continue to fight against the Tyrant Mech with round units. It's just too hard. Too hard of a game at that point. Too much to do. And we're going to see it here as high as just amping up his tank count, I'm assuming, to really crush Protoss here and end the game. Yeah, I assume so also. when you Also, when you have this amount of bases, it's easy to get picked apart as Terran because of how slow their units move across the map. So you do have to be careful, um, you know, just trying to split the map as Terran. It's really hard to do, but I like what Aya has done. I'm curious how many shuttles and Templars we have now. We clearly have a decent goon and zealot count, but where's our AoE? Okay, so we have four Templars, but I still haven't seen a shuttle. But you know, he has had good storm, so there is still a fighting chance. I think what he needs to do is wait for Terran to start moving and then try and catch him when he's out of siege. If he tries to just go and try and pick up what he thinks is a vulnerable position and Terran just, you know, uh, repositions, I don't think that's gonna, that's gonna work. I think he really needs to try and catch them mid siege. Yeah, I agree. You, you can't attack into the mine siege tank like, you're just asking to literally be melted. But if you catch him while he's sieging and you can drop some of those Templar and uh, I think Templar are getting picked off at the Nat there. The Vultures are running around. But if you can do that where you you can catch him mid-siege and get some drops on the tanks, get the uh, Templar down. Oh, no. Don't attack in Paralyzed. Oh we don't God. need to do it. Don't. Oh, my God. So, he, okay, those are really good storms, but unfortunately... His army's fighting uphill, so even though he has great storm, a lot of the goons are missing. Luckily for him, there are zero vultures supporting, so Zealots may be able to get in here. But look at the supply of Protoss. It has just been completely reset, down to 100. But he does kill every single tank that was in that army. I can't believe it. I, I'm shocked now. I, I was almost in tears for Paralyzed. <laughs> uh, but he does wipe it. The problem is, I'm looking at that pro count and base count. Any trade now, yeah. I think, at this point where Terran is just positive, right? Like, Paralyzed doesn't have the bank, doesn't have the eco to re-max again. Yeah, that's the thing. That, that was the key word, trade. Like, that, yes, he killed a lot of tanks, but if he's going to have econ like this, it needed to end the game. It needed to go and push through all the way and start killing the top left, which he was unable to do. He's going to lose even more probes here down to 30 he passed out he knows that it's impossible and that means that Haya he's gonna go up 1-0 in the series yeah I mean well I mean really impressive from Haya man right like nothing to take away from him I thought he played well all the way through paralyzed some great moves but just didn't get to that late game tech and or like harassment with the speed shuttles he just wasn't able to whittle the tank count and if you're gonna play that side you really gotta whittle it down so unfortunately that time that style ended up backfiring um, we are gonna have a, a minute or so break and then we'll be back with game two but other than that uh, what do you well okay I mean that's kind of a big deal but do you think in game two he should switch it up like should he try Arbiters, Carriers? Do you think he could have better success with that? Or do you think the Storms have been dealing enough damage that he just needs, like, a better angle, for example? So I think with the Speed Shuttle, I can't lose the Reavers. But then second, I think he's got to start harassing also the Eco. Like, if you're going to play this mass Speed Shuttle style, like, one of the big things is dropping a Mineral Line, storming SUVs, lowering that SUV count so that Terran can't re macro all the time as you do trade in these fights. I don't know if just trading army for army is enough in these scenarios when Terran's getting four bases. So I think he's got to slow him down also in the eco game along with just his pushes. I so in the ample game, he had that big zealot reaver drop that not only killed 15 SCVs, it killed like 10 vultures also. Like it really slowed down ample quite a bit. So yeah, I agree. He's going to have to get into the main, even if it's just a single reaver and two zealots just something to keep Terran honest like build additional two turrets or something something you got to do something to Terran because if they just sit there 
and just build up 30 tanks, what can you do? Yeah, no, you, so eventually you just die, as we saw. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just like, all right, it, tipping in, I'm, I'm done, it's over. But if you can get some SUV storms, storm nut tanks, whatever you can do, I think it'd be such a, it'd be a big deal for, uh, for Paralyzed. So let's see how he does here in game two. the top right one game away it is higher and at the bottom left it is paralyzed so we're on retro again what do you think of this map when i first saw it i thought this looks like fighting spirit but i've mentioned it to a couple people and they're like how can this is definitely not fighting spirit so i'm like okay whoa okay what do you think uh, I get the fighting spirit feels because of the two entrances to your between your natural and your third. So I do agree with you there, where it, it definitely has a fighting spirit feel in terms of the way your natural and third is set up. Um, very open mid, which makes it, I think, nice for vulture raids, but harder for Terran to move through the middle. Um, and I think it's a little bit, it almost feels like more open and bigger in the middle than fighting spirit. So like pros can get better surrounds. But I, I don't think you're that far off that this is definitely has that fighting spirit. Like, I'll take a third, but there are Dragoons and a Reaver on my third, so I got to yeah. push up it. Like, I definitely feel that. And I think we've seen that in a lot of even the ASL games where the shuttle plane denying thirds here was like a ton, like was massive, right? Like a lot of that going on. Yeah, I feel like if Retro replaced fighting spirit in the map pool and you tuned into Artosa's stream, I feel like all the rants about fighting spirit would come into he would he would have the same rants about retro but um from the games that i have seen on retro compared to fighting spirit in the past terrence have done a, a better job in my opinion versus chronos for whatever reason like mine played absolutely crazy last season mong killed many on retro uh, a lot of terrence have had great success on here we do have normal openers in this game it's another gate in the main gas follow-up another 12 gas follow-up for Hiya, so no gasless again. Yeah, uh, cross map here. Would love to see paralyze if he scouts it. Doesn't seem like he's going for a scout, so he may do something like a 19 nexus. Um, you know, we'll see what he decides, but you can do that with the no scout. Would work out cross map, so that would be really strong for him. We have, I think, is this the first? No, it's not. I was gonna say, is this the first game that Taryn didn't first scout? But I remember last game also. Haya didn't first scout. It was just ample in his series where he got first scouts off every single game. And unfortunately for Haya, he's likely to do the end scout again. And that means he is going to find Paralyze Lap. And you know, I'm a big fan of DTs for those that uh, watch my stream. I would Ooh. really love to see Paralyze mix that in, but I think it is range again. My Oaken DT carrier build. Strong. Yeah. Strong out there. I'm waiting to see it in ASL, man. Somebody bring it out. Only matter of time. There you know these guys for watching yeah. your stream. Yeah, for sure. Well, we've but, got the same opener for Terran. I think it's going to be three Marines, likely a Vulture, and then Command Center. Yeah, and Protus, I think, just going for a 23 Nexus as well. Like, nothing too crazy here from them is either. It's going to be the Nexus and Command Center be coming up at the same time. I just realized that Par Paralyzed didn't scout at all, so his econ is as good as it could possibly be. Of course. Wait, what? Oh Whoa. my gosh. Haya clicked Whoa. into his main to drill through there. Actually got through. I couldn't believe that. That that had to be so fast, but the SCV still dies, and he doesn't see anything. That was wild. That was talking about reaction time, man. Yeah. That was quick. Yeah, that was really fast. I was expecting that if he was going to drill in his main that the SCV would turn around, but did... Whoa, okay. I thought he was actually going to intercept that, that Vulture at the top. Uh-oh, Paralyzed. What's going on? <laughs> Getting a little crazy out there, but we... Oh, Starport here. He almost caught it. But Haya, I, I guess he had something trembling in his in his spidey senses because he avoided that goon he could have easily ran into it now he's going to run into this one but that is a starport in highest main so it is one pack one port we'll see if he can actually get any damage done dragoon does fend off this vulture for now but starport builds can really catch Protoss 
apart, especially players like this that just rally their goons across the map. Yeah, if you're, you want to push around the bunker, it's great. But if a drop does come in, you have three, four, five goons across the map. I mean, you're just in trouble. Uh-oh. Well, okay. Ooh. What's your opinion of seeing that second vulture? I, I start to get concerned. Once I start seeing two, three vultures, they're on the map. I start questioning, like, what's going on here? Right? Like, there should be a tank before another vulture, but there's not probably drop incoming. Yeah, I think he's already given up that this is a drop simply because he built that one single vulture. You know, it's not that a vulture delays your tank, you know, massively, but it's still 20 seconds or so. That's still going to be 20 seconds that the goons can just shell on the bunker. Well, now that I'm watching, it's not going to technically be for free because they're about to eat a mine, but, you know, that's a lot of lost econ uh, repairing that bunker. But somehow, he didn't take any damage there. Yeah, the next trick here, Nogan, for me, always okay. when I'm as a Protus, is saying, all right, well, once you go drop, right, and I have the two-gate observer, siege mode is delayed a lot. Yeah. So if you can hold the drop and push, there's almost a timing to bust Terran again. Yeah. Because they have nothing but a siege tank, a bunker, and nothing. There's. Yeah. You know, like, you got to be careful here as Terran. So we'll see what this drop gets done. Uh-oh, is he going to scout it with the observer? Are they going to cross? Nope. High a nose to maneuver around, okay? I I think Paralyze has an idea, yeah. I, was, I think Paralyze is a little weary of what's going on here. Gotta be. He saw second vulture, he saw speed, so that means, like you were saying, Terran still doesn't have siege mode. Oh, I love it. I love the pylon at the bottom side. He's going to spot this from a mile away. He's also got the SimCity in the main, so this should do absolutely no damage at all. However, he did kind of wall himself in. So if the probes don't get the hell out of the way, he still may be able to rack up a couple of probe kills. Ooh, I was a little worried about that mine for a second, but he cleared it. <laughs> okay, that, that drop was, was mega work. It was two vultures for six probes. I, that's, that's like you pretty much won the lottery. And because of that single drop, he is now back to even and workers, but he's still in a tough spot because like you said, Terran just doesn't have anything when you open like this. You can see his second and third factory aren't even done. And of course, Paralyze knew that this had to be a drop, so he just took a third Nexus. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that those two vultures have so many kills, but I feel like Paralyze is, ooh, Stargate. He's listening to Naoki, he's trading up his style here. He wants to go into some sort of probably carrier tech. This looks like a carrier, a carrier play. Like you gotta, you gotta start thinking like from Terran's perspective. Like, what could Terran possibly have at this point? You know, their factories are delayed. Starport costs a lot. Upgrades are delayed. They can't have tanks because they're building so many vultures. You might as well just go for carriers because what are they gonna attack you with? Two tanks? I mean, you're just not afraid of that. So I'd love to see the fleet beacon. Okay, let's see it. There it is. But the drop did deal more damage than I was expecting. That's the only issue I, I do have with this particular game, is because he did kill six probes and he only committed two vultures, that can be dangerous. If he if he committed two vultures and killed like two probes, that's a little different because his econ's way better. But uh, we'll see if Paralyzed will still be able to get away with the carriers, because this is going to be a five-pack follow-up. Yeah, he definitely needs to make sure he produces a lot of goons. It's like the plus one here as well, but he's got to get a little bit of a ground army so he can help delay Haya pushing across the map. You can't just let Terran get here. And oh, another drop coming in. Oh my, uh, oh my god. Boxer. Ooh. No, no, it's not. It's not. It, it was almost Boxer. Yeah. It, it was just the box. It wasn't the earth. Just box. <laughs> yeah. Well. That drop got shut down. I don't even know if he killed a single probe there. Trades a tank for one goon. I did hear a scan go off, so I assume Haya scanned the main. He probably is aware that carriers are coming. And if he is, he needs to either try and take a third base and somehow scale into a mid game or go into seven factories. I think I think seven factories is actually the best move and just go for the Hail Mary and hope you've got a critical mass Goliath. That can overwhelm the carrier. 
Yeah, I still think there's a window for him to get there, you know, like to be able to get the seven factories out, push through. He has, I would assume, his Goliath Ranger on the way already. He saw the factory spinning. So he definitely still has a window, but if he doesn't get there soon and four carriers get out, the game is going to be very, very hard for him. Well, maybe, maybe seven fact is actually not the answer because I'm looking at his gas. Very, very low. I don't know if he'd be able to support it, so. Uh, that 100 gas could be, make better use to just be put into two Goliaths. He is going into six factories instead of seven. I I think I saw his... Okay. I was going to say, I think I saw his armory not spinning, but now I realize that plus one's already done, so that's probably why it wasn't spinning. Yeah, we're sitting on Siege here. I don't know if he's going to try to start moving across the map. It doesn't seem like he has a ton of units yet, though. So I don't know. Nope, he's moving out. Yeah, he is moving out. Uh, my personal opinion is 100, 110 supply is kind of hard to make pushes work. It, for some reason, like 130 just feels way better if you do a push. But we'll see if this can this can work. You got to remember, Kronos doesn't have that much ground, like just in general. So he may not actually need that much. We've got a Vulture drop in third base and in the natural. They both get shut down. But it's just six goons for defense. Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to... He's trying to counter the natural, and it's just going, looks like, really not well here. <laughs> I'm uh, no, right now he's busted through, but the SCV block plus the high ground, no way he's getting up there. Uh, I don't know, man. This might not have been the answer. Yeah, this is going to get weird because he's just going to build turrets. Like, yes, he cut off reinforcements of the Goliath, which are fantastic, because now his carriers should be able to just, you know, wreck the tanks. But with four SCVs here, building a bunker, building t uh, turrets everywhere, he doesn't need that many Goliaths. He just needs to have enough turrets to kill the Interceptor. So I think actually this counterattack from Paralyze may backfire. He did he did really ransack that natural though. Look at Haya's econ now, 36 probes. He lost the tank for free. Yeah, I think Paralyze knows, but Haya's going up to that third base, but it looks like there are some units there. I don't know, man. This is going to be a tricky spot, but Paralyze, if he can hold up for the four carriers, should be able to take it. Well, if there's an angle to attack from, this is oh it. Oh, my because, goodness. Oh don't my lose God. it. He almost lost it. I was going to say, this is where we you want to... We don't have Interceptor upgrade now. We only have oh, my God. No Interceptor oh, upgrade. no. Well, this is where you wanted to attack because that's like unbuildable terrain. Like maybe you can build one turret there, but now it's too late because like you said, these carriers are basically useless. Oh my goodness. There's no upgrade completed. He's in trouble. What's he going to do? He's only going to have half of them. He's losing two of the Nexus. Here we go. Somehow Paralyze's supply is 150 though to 86. I don't know how that happened. But he can't even kill five Goliaths, man. Yeah, I mean, he's got what really is two carriers there, not four. <laughs> yeah. That's really what he's got. I mean. Well. Ah, uh, it's a blunder and a half. Well, if we look at the natural of Haya, he's still not mining there. Like, he is still on one base. Vultures are going to find the expansion at top left, so that's gonna get shut down temporarily but Paralyze still has a massive army 144 to 95 versus a Terran that can't get any units across the map Kai is basically broke like he's spending all of his money on turrets I still think Paralyze wins this game yeah I mean eventually right he will get the upgrade there's only six tanks out there if he has enough cells some legs he should be able to bust it Ooh. well maybe not because Oh my god, this is so rough. There's so many tanks and so many turrets. And also the tanks are in range of the ramp. So as the goons come down one at a time, they're instantly dead. It's not like the Vermeer game where he was probably able to get down his entire army without getting shot. Like everything's just going to get blown up as they come down. However, this is a great move from Paralyze. He catches the reinforcements. Yeah, not allowing the rest of the units to sink up there is going to be massive. Because if he does bust it... He had did secure top left, so he'll be able to mine there. He is on two bases with carriers, so that could be huge. I don't want to see him go in here. Just back up Paralyze. Kill the Goliaths as they come out, and you're in good shape. 
Oh my gosh, he's going so far in and he doesn't have the, the interceptors leashed really right now. So uh, these carriers, okay, well now that he's got them leashed and he's doing a good job, picks off both the tanks, that means that these dragoons can just reign supreme, even if there's only six of them. It's just going to be so hard to stop. There's zero tanks. Six carriers versus, what is it, ten Goliaths? I think this could be it. Yeah, it looks like Paralyzed is going to bust in here. Yeah, there's no way. To... Okay, oh! I was going to say there's no way to hold, but then he steps on a mine. It wouldn't be Paralyzed unless he hits a mine. Oh, Paralyzed. And now I am moving to he the killed. top. Ooh, he got it. Got he a, got a carrier, and he killed yeah. two more goons with that. And look at this, he's branched off the tanks and the tanks to go till, kill top left, and he's he's flanking with Goliaths from the bottom side? Unfortunately, I don't know if it's enough Goliaths, but he is making a good fight out of it. Yeah, he's gas starved. Look at his gas. He just has no gas. If he could build some Goliaths here, like if he had... If he had been able to pump out like five Goliaths and hit like from a 360 angle on the carriers, I think that could have been the difference maker, but not able to do so, and now this command center might actually die. Top left gets blown up, though. He's going to lose every single probe, lose all of his, uh, lose the Nexus, too, and in Paralyze's main, he's not mining. We're mined out. The game has gotten weird now. The yeah, game has weird. gotten weird, but three tanks, a bunker, I'm not sure it can hold that many units. Oh, yeah. There's no way it can hold. If... if if somehow this base was still running for Haya, I think he's got a shot. Supplies are still, you know, way closer than I was expecting. 82 to 131. Yes, I realize it's a 50 supply lead, but okay, well, now it's a 45 supply lead. I, think I would love to see Paralyze kill another, uh, make a DT at the top left and saying kill a scanner, but too late. That is so right. much ground. He just needs to get out of his base. Yeah, if he gets out, he just will destroy. There we go. We've got a shuttle going to bottom middle. I was thinking, like, I, well, I was looking at Paralyze's money, and he wasn't spending it on anything, so I thought he might be nervous about building additional carriers because then maybe he can't afford the interceptors. But now he does have, I think, probes unloaded bottom middle. There's the Nexus. He should be able to snipe these tanks. Yeah, that's all he needs to kill is just the tanks. Yeah. Once the tanks are gone, he can get down the ramp. Oh, he oh. loses a carrier! To a turret. Wow. Well, uh, I don't know if it matters. Yeah, bunkers are pretty good, but I don't know if they're this good. Well, like, if you lose all your zealots like that, they're that good. And he obviously doesn't have any detection. Okay, he taps that. I actually wow. thought that was Paralyzed tapping out for a second, and I was about to lose my mind. But there it is. Paralyzed. He ties up the score. One to one. What a wild game. That was crazy, man. I, I mean, we saw no Interceptor upgrade, which really hurt. <laughs> and then you're throwing away carriers. Like, you know, things start getting tricky, man. Things start getting tricky with that, that combination of stuff. Yeah, like when, like you said, when those carriers took so much damage in the initial stages, I'm just like, dude, we're not ever going to get critical mass carriers. We're just going to be stuck with four, and <laughs> we're just going to bleed out. But the, the goon counterattack combo with the carriers, game-changing, really well done from him. And I, I still liked what Haya did, which was branching off the tanks and the Goliaths. I think that's all you could really do. So it was a good idea, but just a little bit uh, too many carriers. But we're going to be going into game three and this is going to be tournament life for both of them so we have in the bottom right on polypoid everybody's favorite map it is paralyzed and in the bottom left it is Haya, and it looks like this is the newer version of polypoid because i can see that those mineral patches are better right on the left side yeah but I still don't love Polypoid when it's horizontal positions like this for Protus. I find it very hard because Terran can kind of just push from their third high ground across to your base. Very hard to find a place to engage. Yeah, that is true. Terran definitely wants to spawn on this position if they're, if uh, Protus is going to spawn bottom right, for sure. 
Uh, it does make it hard for Terran to attack, like, into the natural, because if Protoss has stuff on their third base and they just come in through high ground and you're a little bit too close, it can be a little bit awkward. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I like this for Terran. Again, we have another pylon in the main. You know, I'm always hoping that somebody's willing to risk it all for 12 Nexus or 14 CC. And as I said that, that's an additional probe queued up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, now again, it's getting cheeky. Well, this could backfire for Paralyzed because I noticed in the Haya games that he was horizontal scouting every single time, right? And look at this. For some reason, there's a Rax forward. But that does generally mean that it is going to be gasless. And my opinion is, versus 12 Nexus, I'm not that big of a fan of gasless. Like, you can't really punish it at all unless Protoss makes a massive mistake. So I still like Paralyze's position. Yeah, I feel like this is the reason why 12 Nexus really hit the scene a couple of years ago, or even like a year ago, because of all the gasless tearing we're doing. So I do like 12 Nexus versus the gasless, 100%. Well, as I stated, I remember Haya horizontal scouting every game so far, and this is one of those times where I wish we had player cams, because he would not be happy about this. Command Center is going to be going down. He doesn't... No way. He must have seen it, because there's no other reason that you would back off like this. He had to. Yeah. He must have just barely seen it, and for some reason, we didn't get the color on the mini map because you're never doing this Esther. and this, this is this is not a thing yeah is he gonna try to build a bunker out of vision yeah or? I, I, he must he must be doing like a long range bunker right there probably yep there he is he's gonna leapfrog it together oh but the probe oh actually the probe doesn't know that that's not the first scv so this bunker is gonna complete oh uh, it's gonna get weird again it's gonna get weird again Naoki. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the probe sees that the this is a gasless opener. So, you know, I'm actually, in, in most games, I'm okay with Protoss sacking their 12 Nexus and just powering. But in this scenario where Terran has gasless behind it, you can't sack this Nexus. You've got to save it. And that cybernetics isn't even done yet. That's a completed Nexus. Oh my, or a completed bunker. Com oh, he's going to complete that too. He's killed two probes also. He's going to get in. I think this is already a denied base. Oh my god. Oh no. It couldn't have gone worse. This is absolute disaster here for high, uh, for Paralyze. I mean, he can counter with this one Zealot, but it's not going to matter with the Sim City. And I think he decided to put a bunker down as well. Yep, bunker coming in. And this was not two Zealots like you sometimes see. So this is literally just one Zealot here and a dream. And the Sim City is zealot tight, so he can't even really run into the main. It's a dead Nexus. Paralyzed even cut for this. Like he's at 18 probes versus 21 SCVs. This is. I don't even know what you do. Yeah, he realizes that he he's gotta save it. Like this is a guy that has gasless. You can't just sack the Nexus. You gotta go for it. Here we go. Big moment. Gotta get it done. Micro and the dragoon back. I think there's. Oh my god. Is he, gonna, he might get it. He will save this base. He's lost so many probes. Can he focus down one more probe? No. But even even this bunker just being here is annoying. You can't run yeah. by it. There's so many Marines, he can unload them and just force you to not run by. Yeah, and now he's down five workers. Lost so much. If I'm paralyzed, I might even try to counter, man. Killing all these marines, I might just try to go for oh snipes again. Oh my Not god! It. No! Oh! Wow! Well, he, does he have range? There's no way he could possibly have range. Yes, no, he, he can't even range the bunker. Yeah, he does, and he just went right for a robo here. Yeah, but, but like so... you said, he's down five workers because of the gasless man. Yeah, and seven and the... now. Yeah, and the robo's so late. Like, if this was a four-minute robo somehow, you know, maybe that's different. He elevators into the main, and Terran doesn't have, you know, anything really. Like, the, the factory is just now finishing. Uh, but this robo, I don't I don't know how you can get back. I mean, obviously the game plan must be rebreak. Can't be for Observer. 
observer is suicide. It has to be Reaver. He has to even up the worker count somehow. Yeah, if he goes uh, observer, I'll cry for him. <laughs> oh. Shed some tears because now he is behind massively. He's got to try to do something to equalize this damage. Yep, there's the armory. I still didn't see support bay just yet. I saw range coming in. And that means that it's going to be delayed even more. And by that time, probably turrets are set up. Goli even if it's just one Goliath, that's hard to deal with because, you know, now you have a moving shot, moving shot anti air. Uh, yeah, this is real rough. Yeah, Siege up for Haya just playing super defensive, doing what he has to do. Not going to try to take any damage, and he knows he can just kind of push and win this game. Yeah. I, I don't know what Paralyze should do. A lot of times you hear people say, like, well, you just got to go for, you know, something greedy, right? You got to try and come back. But also sometimes what can happen is the other player knows that they've got a massive bleed. So they just try and, like, six-fact or four-fact or something and try and end it. So sometimes if you don't play greedy and instead just go, like, for, like, a six-gate and they and you catch tanks out of position, for example, you can crawl back that way. And it, as I say that, look at the worker count. It's now 41 to 36. It was, like, an eight-worker advantage a minute ago. Now it's just five. Yeah, I mean, you can play with the Reavers on the high ground here, right? And just pick off units as they come. Same old, same old as we've seen from many pro players with the reavers but it seems like paralyzed wants to try to get a little more done but if he loses this shuttle life is real miserable oh yeah he can't lose the shuttle he's lucky that there's no turrets here but there must be one in the main if there it is the tank is already set up now he unloads okay he might be able to actually kill a tank well that's definitely worth for some reason, I thought the Reaver died, but it did. You may have to get a second take. Okay, that's really good damage. Wow. Surprised he got that many, but two tanks there for two Zealots is huge. That'll slow down any push potential Haya has, and we see Paralyze immediately taking a third Nexus as well. Yeah, I actually am not too keen on Haya's transition here, especially now that he's lost two tanks for just two zealots, that really does hurt. You know, there's a big difference between having, let's say, nine tanks and seven tanks. And now, Protoss is up in workers. Terran, yes, they're gonna have plus one, but they have five factors. They don't have a third command center. They don't have a star port. Uh, if Paralyzed gets gateways, which is what he's doing, I think he's got a good shot at holding, especially sitting on that high ground like you were talking about. Yeah, the Reaver is just the anti-push, right? Like the five, six fact timings. Double Reaver, just picking off things, slowing them down while Protoss builds behind it. It's just perfect. So not loving the highest choice here either with the five fact, knowing that it's a Reaver, but we'll see if he can get up and get to some damage done. I just don't know if he can. Yeah, Protoss is up in supply now. This is, this is wild to me, and this is going to be, you know, I even said the exact number, six gate, six gate Reaver. Versus five fact, Terran is having to build Goliaths, which you know, are not vultures, don't have mines. They're still obviously effective for clearing out observers and shuttles, but Goliath's not the most impactful unit when pushing. And Protoss doesn't need to build probes anymore. They can literally just focus on building units. He's got a citadel. You don't need storm for this either. Just build tons and tons of zealots, and I think you should be able to hold this. Yeah, I agree. He wants six, seven gateways. Get the speed shuttle. I mean, uh, speed zealots. Get yourself on the map. Just slow the push down. Keep macroing. You should be fine. Okay, that's that's a lot of Goliath. Okay, can't lose that. He cannot lose that. That's our win condition. He does at least get them unloaded. Turn and fire. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh okay. my goodness. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> now he's in big time trouble. It's it's one of those things where it's such a delicate situation with the Goliath there, and seeing seven, you almost got to pick up and say, I'm going to back up, whatever. Like, I'll just go back, let you walk, Siege, let you walk, because now what do we do? Yep, and now this is going to be really tough. Uh, and Protoss still doesn't have speed. Uh -oh. He does catch the tank out of, out, of, out of Siege mode. 
but he doesn't have speed, like I said, so he can't commit to it. Also, the, the shuttle was way too far back. However, he is in that scenario where he does have high ground, like I was talking about, and these tanks would be shooting uphill, but now these goons are cut off from the rally. Also, Paralyzed has skipped out on observers every game. So how does he actually sync up rallies with rally uh, forces with his current forces? Yeah, he can't. And this choke is very tough, even from the high ground to attack down into. So he's got to be really careful with how he pushes here. Oh, okay. There you go. This, this, is, this is what it all comes down to. He's got to bust this. There's too many tanks. There's way too many vultures. There's so many mines. Zealots are getting picked off. Here comes the shuttle, but it turns around. He's just bleeding units. He can't make a decision. Yeah, this is not good. He's just bleeding out Dragoon, Zealots. Now we decide to go to the shuttle. Oh, I no. Think oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God, Nayo kid. Come on, man. Well, that's going to be it, unfortunately, for Paralyzed. There's no other way to shuttle bomb these mines and take out the tanks. The tanks are now in range of the natural. Yes, he's not, you know, actually shelling the third base yet, but the unit comps from both sides are just not great. It's like pure zealot from the bottom, almost pure zealot from the top. Look how fast they die just running into the mine. And I think we're gonna see a GG here in a second from Paralyzed. What's that Reaver doing? He just wouldn't oh, fire. That looks like a Raz Reaver, baby. <laughs> just frozen. Uh, well, I think Paralyzed had a really, really good comeback. Like, he did all the right things. Like, he had to pull probes there. He couldn't sack the 12 Nexus. He had a great Reaver drop. He had even a good usage of the goons and Reavers initially when Terran moved out. But once he lost those Reavers and got pinned back, uh, he needed to be a little bit more decisive about just going for it. Because as you saw, he literally lost like 20 units basically for free. And... You just can't do that. Yeah. The Reaver is themselves. I mean, he's got to see with the Observer, the seven Goliaths. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to back up, man. Like, I'm just not going to engage here. Keep forcing siege, move, siege, move, you know? Even if he fights with the Reavers back at his own side of the map, at least they're going to have AoE and do some damage to, like, the clumped up Terran units. Yeah. Once they died, it's, it's, just, it's just over. Yeah, another usage... Well, did he have a Reaver at the end? I don't think a Reaver actually got in the shuttle at the end, but I was going to say, like, he could cut off reinforcements, like, with a Reaver. That would just be annoying, but uh, that was not an option. So, well done from Haya. He avoids elimination, and that sets us up for a, another Terran versus Zerg. It is going to be Haya versus Sulky. It's our rematch. rematch. Is it a rematch? No, Haya, it's an Haya played Sulky, no, game one? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, he did, I forgot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it is a rematch. I wonder if Aya will be able to get some redemption here. He is spawning in the top left as the blue parent. And in the top right, of course, we have the one and only, it is Oki. Now they played each other once. Does someone mix it up knowing what the other one has done? I don't know, because Sulky has done the 215 gas every game. Like, he did it every game so far. Yeah, he's been sticking his belt, so I wonder if he'll mix it up or have to stay with it. He beat him high the first time, or is high going to say, you know what, I'm going to mix it up because he did get me. I think both players have so m are able to play so many different styles that it's likely that we're going to see a mix-up. Haya may still go Valkyries, but if he goes Valkyries, I would like to see him mix in a tank. I think the single Valkyrie just rally or rally Valkyrie rally tank with Marine Medic combo, that's a really strong push. And in fact, in ASL, uh, was it last season or the season before, Royal and Rush made games that looked like they were just 100% dead. They turned them into a victory because of how strong that push is. So instead of going into the double port, I would like to see that. And if Sulky's not gonna go 215. I mean, he can do anything. He can go two minute gas, he can go three hatch, he can go pool first and then go three bases. I mean, he can do literally it all. Yeah, I mean, at this level, these guys have everything in their arsenal, right? So they can they can pull out whatever they like. Uh, I guess I wonder if it's a little bit of like the mindset, the meta of like who's doing what. I played against this guy or not, or they're like, you know what? 
I'm just going to hit my best build and go for it, which in a lot of scenarios is usually the best way to play, right? Get a build that you're like, I'm really good at this build, even at this level, and say I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over again. Just beat me. Yeah, he's definitely good enough to just say, like, I know you can't beat me when I play this, so it wouldn't surprise me to see the 215 again, but there it is. It is a mix-up. It is going to be two-minute gas. So not going to have as good of econ as he did before, but he may not build a third hatch in his main this time. He may actually build it at another base. We'll see what he actually wants to opt into. No wall from Terran this time as well to note. I wonder yeah, if that will trigger true. anything from Zerg saying, all right, well, you're not going to wall or anything. Let's see what's going on here. Well, you can see Terran was building the Marine, but he does scout him first does not cancel that marine in time so it is just gonna be one marine expand you know not a big deal also with the depot too so it's slightly slower than ample's opener but definitely a very common opener in the main scv does see well he didn't see the gas timing but when he sees the layer timing he'll know that this was a two minute gas yep there he goes and he sees it yeah very standard here nothing too crazy right like now, as Terran, when you see this early of uh, Lair, does it trigger anything for you in your mind? Like, all right, this guy two hatched new to this time. Like, I need to do ABC, or you're just like, whatever, this is standard. No, nah, I just know that it's standard. The reason you know it's standard is it takes about 50 seconds to build the extractor and mine gas. So when you see it at 255, it could only be a two minute, a two minute um, extractor timing. It would be impossible for it to be 215. So you know that this guy doesn't have like an additional drone. You know, he can't be hiding a third hatch anywhere. So you know that this just has to be a normal opener. Now he is in the dark. Uh, my experience watching Solki, Solki doesn't generally go lurker. He's not somebody like Hero, for example, who could definitely mix in lurkers. So even though I lost my SCB, I would still be very confident, especially versus Solki, that this is gonna be Spire. And there it is. Hey, do we have to worry about the Ling Flood? No. This is, this is not B rank. Okay, this not B rank. No link nope. blood. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, if you're going to make moves like this, and Sulky knows you are going to do that, you could be running into a link flood. Be oh my gosh, actually, he has speed. So he's going to lose all of his Marines here. Oh, maybe not. Well, he's going to lose way more Marines than he wanted. He lost four out of the five. And this normally would be panic mode. Uh, you need a bunker ASAP unless you have a really strong read on your opponent because it could be a Ling Flood. B rank engage. B rank, yeah. Here we go, baby. Light him up. <laughs> Mass Ling incoming. Somehow, Aya has a surprising amount of Marines. Even though he lost, what, four of them? He still has six left over, and it's only five minutes into the game. He's going to have two more. Oh my gosh, he's just going for it. Speedlings, they don't care. He might actually kill them all. Wow. B rank Zerg. Unbelievable. It is a speedling all in. It's not necessarily an all in because there's a spire, but there are a lot of links. This game's over, Raz. There's no SCV pull. There's only two Marines. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Luckily, there's fire bats there. I guess it's not over yet, but. This was definitely a big mistake from from uh, Haya. He's going to lose so much mining time. Lost, obviously, all his Marines. And now he's got to scramble to get turrets up. Yeah, I was going to say, right? Like, having no turrets, losing your Marine count, now you're in trouble with trying to get the nav against Tabuta. Like, there's no way you can push out here. Yeah, but Sulky did commit really hard to this. Remember, we were talking about 22, 23 drones. Now he's only at 18. Haya's... SCV count is obviously hurting too, sitting around 28, but really 28 to 30, this is not that bad for Terran. This is still kind of a normal-ish SCV count. I would I would actually favor Terran now, now that the game has somewhat stabilized, but he's got to get the turrets up. If the turrets get denied, that's when it starts getting ugly. Yeah, I can imagine like these muta just absolutely wreaking havoc if there are no turrets up, <laughs> of course. But it seems like Haya is getting them in time. He's got two, third one on the way. He's got one, maybe two by his racks. Like, he should be feeling pretty strong. I wonder if we're going to see Solki just go for a two base all in here. Yeah, he could. He still has a lot of lanes left over. And we don't see Drone anywhere out in the map, even though he has 300 minerals 
to build a hatchery, but he's not droning at all. There's no Hydra Den, there's no Queen's Nest, there's no Evolution Chamber. So it really could just be a committed uh, a, a bust, I guess. Yeah, he might just want to go for it because he knows he's in a difficult situation. <clears throat> See what he can do here with the Muta. Because it looks like right now only Muta in production. Yep, three. Yeah, and what wow. you're looking for here is Karen is you just got to scan their natural over and over and over and just get a read on the drone count. If you see there's just three drones there, you know you're getting going. You don't really even need to scan the main, especially since you saw so many Link being built in the beginning. So all Aya has to do here is don't die to the Mutas. It sounds so simple, but surprisingly, it's not very simple. Yeah, Mutas is a good unit, man. Good unit. They clump up, they fire, they break things down. Makes life difficult. Yeah, in this game, he should also go ball free for sure. You know it's a massive commitment to Mutas. It can't be anything else. We finally see Soki starting to mix in some drones, uh, but he's committed so hard to this. Um, I don't know how well this is going to turn. But actually, whoa, he's going to go into two hatch, hive, probably guardian hydra. The old Gardra coming in, it seems like, yeah. Well, again, I heard another scan go off. Like I said, all you need to do is scan the natural. And unfortunately for Soul Key, all of his tech is at the natural. So, Kaya already knows exactly what's going on. So he has multiple options here. He can go Valkyries, get plus one weapon, and do okay versus Guardians. He can start scaling into Vessels, because he actually has a bit of time before Guardians come out. Yeah, I was going to say, he has some options, right? Like, he doesn't have to just commit to bio turrets, knowing that now that it's Guardian. We do see a couple buildings in the back here coming up. Yeah, we see a armory with two starport. I think you're right. I think we're going to see those Valkyries also. Well, this could get dangerous. I have put his eBay in a not ideal uh, position. The turrets don't cover it. Uh, the armory's also kind of somewhat exposed. I guess they're, they're a little closer to the bottom turret, so I don't think that's going to get picked off. But yeah, he's got to really focus on saving that eBay. And it is going to be Valkyries this time. It's not going to be Vessels. See him trying to keep going in, but another Muta goes down. He's got to be careful here. Eco is not big enough to keep refreshing Muta. So, Hydra out. Guardian probably going to be... What? Whoa! Filer actually, the Filer Mound? So, it's... I guess it could be for Lurkers. He knows, he saw the armory, right? Oh, it is for Lurkers. So he saw the armory. He knows that this guy can't have vessels. That means there's going to be no counter to the Lurkers. So I like it. But this is a really, well, I was going to say this is a really heavy gas commitment, but that was assuming he's going Guardians, which I don't think he's going. Oh, going and he found the eggs. How did he find these? He scanned the man away. Scanned. Oh. That's a really good split. That's an amazing split. He focuses down all of the guard or all of the lurkers, and he killed almost all of the mutas. Look how many left over. Five, and they're basically dead. And we're on two base. The three lurkers, no defilers out yet. I mean, Haya has got to be feeling real good. He's in a really, really good spot now. Yeah, it all comes down to the defiler now. Okay, and and having energy on your comps out, of course. Uh, he's. I don't think he's aware that it's. Oh, taps out. He just GGs. I. I actually don't think that Sulky was out of it right there because I don't think that Haya was completely sure that it was Defiler. That building that he was building was actually the science facility, so he wasn't gonna have a radiate for like two minutes. I think there still could have been a window, but you know, Sulky, his his mutas were basically just not. Not even units, right? They're going to get basically one-shotted. He didn't have many lurkers. He didn't have any links, and he didn't have any sunken. So maybe the counterattack would have just killed him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, just tapping out, thinking I guess he's so behind, losing those lurkers, losing the muta. He doesn't have anything to support the lurkers. No larva on two hatcheries. So he said, GG. Well, Haya with another win could go through. Soul Key needs a win right here. This is critical for Sulky. You don't want to go out in the first round, obviously, but also very important for Haya, making it out of a really strong group. I think that Sulky was the clear favorite, and then I think it was a toss-up in between the remaining three, so if he was to make it through this group, that's got to be a really big confidence booster, 
and he is in the top left of retro and then in the bottom right we have mr need money himself sulky he's down oh one all right so tell me about retro tvz like it don't like it it's neutral how do you feel neutral to me i think it's a fine map um i think fighting <laughs> my opinion is i think fighting spirit and retro are similar and my experience on fighting spirit is i think it's a fine map even if it's hard to deal with reavers and stuff on the third base i think it's fine i don't when i when i play fighting spirit i think to myself okay balanced map like i don't have any issues so i feel like this is just gonna be fine for Darren. and let's see what no bbs breaks my heart yeah love to see some wildness you know in this matchup but we're not gonna get it I'm a big fan of pool first into three bases, but on this particular map, I don't think it's a great choice because you have the double ramp to the third base. But if this was a map like Eclipse, I would have really loved to see Sulky pull it out. But again, it's not going to be a fast pool unless he goes for a really weird 12 pool or 11 pool, which I have seen from time to time, but really not that often. In the main of Haya, we've got the racks coming down did not go for an instant 11 scout so i guess that's something to note and the reason for that is oh. he's gassing man oh it's getting tricky out here yeah and haya as i was stating in the opening of this like he can play right like it's not just leda that can play wraith it's not just flash that can play wraith like haya could mix in a wraith all in here it could be one 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 too and remember, in ASL, JYJ, I think, versus Sulky, maybe it was Hero, he did a Wraith all-in on this map. So this could just oh. definitely just be uh, Haya saying, hey, I can do that too. I'm inspired. Yeah. Are we going to see a proxy factory? No. This is Wraith, man. This is going to be Wraith. He's continuing to mine gas. Okay. There's nothing that, well, there's really no intel for Sulky right now. It's going to be a last scout for him. There's not going to be anything that gives it away because I think by the time the drone gets here, there's going to be two Marines. And remember, Haya was moving out with two or three Marines. So even if the Marines are far forward, I don't think he's going to suspect anything. Yeah, he's thinking, oh, this is normal. This guy's been doing this another time of just some pressure. Yep, there it goes. If the drone turns around, the game's over. Well, not not over, but, you know, Terran's... This is as ideal as it could be for Terran. Now, I see a lot of Terran going block at the natural. Oh, Naoki, you just know what's going on. B, the I old great players, one man. speaks again. Remember, I told you, he, he played Wraith on Triathlon versus Protoss. If he's playing Wraith versus Protoss... You know damn well he can play Wraith versus Zerg. And that's exactly what it is. My I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I, I'm a big fan of Sulky. But anybody that can take down Sulky in ZVT, that's impressive. Uh, and it really does look like this could just end the game. Unless he can get Hydras out in time. Luckily for him, I guess it is Cross. <laughs> So it will take a little bit longer, but he has no sunken. He has no. He has two lings. That's if he's going to draw them out of position. I hope. And he didn't nope. know uh, but he doesn't know that the wraith follow up either, right? Like he could just think this is. Oh my gosh. Vulture into expand. Yeah, look at this. He sees the vulture, and okay, he saves the drones, but he's still. Did he put a Hydra down down in this main? I didn't see a building go down there. It's still just fire and spawning pool. So he still doesn't know that this is race. I think... I don't, I don't know. It's not like I play with Haya or watch Haya enough. But in my limited watching of Haya, I think anytime you see vultures like this, it's probably going to be too port. Oh my god, the vulture gets in. It doesn't even this matter because the vultures are going to do so much damage as it is. And he's probably going to be supply blocked in a second as well. Oh my god. That's not even close to finishing. So you're right. He's going to be supply blocked. Oh, oh my god. Oh my goodness. It's just, this could just be a six minute game. I... 
what do you do from this point? I I think you got to do exactly what he's doing here. You just speed all, all in. in. That's it. That's all you can do. Not anymore. I got no overlords. <laughs> yeah, these eight lings or whatever it is. That's it. He's still supply blocked. He's gonna be even more so after this overlord. Wow. Wow, man. I yes, thought for I had sure. Done it. He's done it. He's like, look, Sulky's at, at 18 out of 19. He still can't even build a Muta because they cost two supply. <laughs> and even if he could, he doesn't have the money to build like more than, you know, one or two. Also, High is going to have Cloak in a second. Oh my goodness, Nyokin. You've been asking for the two port raid. Scourge, that's not enough. Now when you got this kind of micro. Oh my gosh. Look at Sulky, it. It's beautiful. the favorite. About to be eliminated here by Haya. Damn, I feel like I'm watching ASL from last Whoa! season where we had like all the top players get eliminated in the first round and he's already gone. Wow. So the OP race sends two through. Ample and Haya. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Two, you took the words right out of my mouth. The two Terran I mean, this is why people play Terran, right? They're just so strong. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. This is wild. Yeah, and that was that was really well done. And also Ample's play versus Sulky was great too. But also the, the Terran versus Protoss games today also really delivered. Like the storms were great. You know, they were quite long, even though we didn't get into super late game comps for Protoss. Like, it was uh, it was possible for Paralyzed to win. So a little bit sad that he didn't do a little better there. But uh look forward to seeing him in future seasons and, of course, seeing him in future ASLs, too. Well, like you said, everything was so close, right? Like, Haya 1-1 with Paralyzed going into that elimination game, into the, the you know, birth game. But... I mean, it, it was really a, on a thread. Like, if he would have kept those rivers alive and picked some units off and ran away, he could have been playing against Soul Key in this decider match. So, really, really close all the way through. For sure. Like, this, this group really delivered. It was, like, three hours long. Like, the average game length was, like, 25 minutes. Like, that's pretty unheard of. So, uh, it was great. So, that's going to be it for Group A today. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is just the beginning of the NWSL. So look forward to casting future groups. We'll be back in the near future with Group B. So definitely tune in. And thank you again to Raz for helping me cast. We also have Diggity, which we'll be mixing in on the cast. So that's going to be quite exciting too. Yeah, it was awesome. I can well done today. Really exciting. Really great games. Definitely come back. Tune in for some more of these groups because they are exciting. This is an amazing event, and we'll see everybody soon. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.